get all my friends to do it, that's it as well.
Well, hello everybody from Jersey. Uh, the, when did I first come to Jersey? 25 years ago. We've been coming regularly the last few years, so it, yes, it's a live broadcast. Um, if you're wondering why Ian's not here, he's in Ostrava in the Czech Republic, covering their show uh, this weekend, live broadcasting their show. Uh, lots of arrivals to, uh, to cover, that's a huge show. And uh, so I'm here with Alex, whose uh, camera is pointing me at the moment, and uh, give us a little wave, Alex. There we are, that's our Alex. He's on camera too today. And uh, Andrew is mixing, so we're a three-man team. And uh, the facilities we at here are great, they really look after us at Jersey. Uh, they value what we do, and uh, we're looking forward to the show. And hey, we're going to have the Red Arrows and the Patrie France. That's a rare one, isn't it? So uh, let's not have too much jingoism. Let's, uh, but let's see if we uh, see, see who we think is the best team today. Um, well, we've got the Poseidon coming in shortly. It's just a flyby, and then uh, it'll be a bit of a break until the Patrie France. Uh, in about an hour's time, so uh, we've got some clips to show you. We'll pop in and do one or two uh, interviews, and uh, we've got a few uh, interesting things from Planes TV's past to show you. So, uh, well, let's look out for Poseidon now, I suppose. aeroplane in the Jersey International Air Display Flying Programme. The first time was two years ago, and it's a very rare chance indeed to see it flying at a public event. It's one of the RAF's newest assets. It's the Boeing Poseidon MRA-1. This is the replacement for the much-loved and now long-retired Hawker Siddeley Nimrod in the Maritime Patrol and Attack role, in service with squadrons stationed at RAF Lossiemouth on the Murray Firth. And it's being operated, I believe, today by a crew from number 120 Squadron, a unit with a very long history in the maritime patrol business. It's running in now from our right. You can see it's got lights on. And you might well think it looks quite a familiar design. And you'd be right, because this is based on the Boeing 737-800 commercial airliner. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it obviously has a, a very different purpose. Let's, let's talk about that purpose. As I said, this is an aircraft that is designed for all sorts of maritime functions. Long-range patrol, strike, 
long-range rescue support, which of course was a very key role performed by the Nimrods as well as their more offensive duties. And it is now very much operational in Royal Air Force service. Of course, we did have something of a capability gap between the retirement of the Nimrod and the introduction of the Poseidon, during which time RAF crews were assigned to other air forces that retained maritime patrol capabilities on aircraft such as the Lockheed P-3 Orion and operators of this, the P-8 Poseidon. It's a very graceful fly past, isn't it? It is. Very nice to see it here. It'll be going en route, I believe, back up to Scotland straight from here. So we're very privileged to see it. Wow, that you know, that's that's a long route round for a one fly pass, isn't it? It is indeed, but uh, 120 Squadron has a particular connection with the Channel Islands as well, mm. and so that's the reason for its appearance here today. So that was the Poseidon. You never know, we might see a little more extensive participation from Poseidons in Jersey shows in the years to come, but for the moment they're still to some extent working up. They're not able, due to operational commitments, to put on a full display, mm. so a fly past is what we see today. Oh, it's a tremendous fly past indeed, and uh, it, always good to see that. Now, we have got a little bit of time, uh, but just looking ahead to what we have in the programme, just whet our appetite for some, some real highlights that we can see. Yes, of course. So, to run through the rest of the items we've got, then we do now have a bit of a break. In fact, until about five to two, when we'll mm. be seeing the first of our two national aerobatic teams that we've got today. Very privileged to have them both on the bill. And the first of them are friends from the French Air Force, the Armée de l'Air et de l'Espace, the, the French Air and Space Force, to give them their full name these days. They've been the, good a few years, haven't they? They have the Patrouille de France, and it's their 70th anniversary this wow. year of the Patrouille de France. Of course, they've had different aircraft over that time. Mm. It's the Dassault Dornier Alphajet that provides their mount these days. And the aircraft especially marked for that 70th anniversary and this Murray is the Patrouille's only British Isles display of this 70th anniversary season that's the sort of esteem Jersey is held in. Oh that's tremendous, we'll come back and talk about some of the others in just a few minutes, a few people to mention, um, Hannah, thanks Hannah for emailing us, uh, said can you please say a big hi to Rihanna Lambot who's enjoying her day off from teaching We'll leave that right there with you. Can we give a shout out to Simon and Robin Kelly? They're holding their annual air show picnic on the avenue for the 10th year in a row. Nothing puts them off the weather or anything else. Good weather today, by the way. Um, it's when our friends drop in for a picnic, lunch, sandwiches, homemade cakes, orange drizzle cake in 2023, by the way. We'll be popping around very shortly, all of us. Uh, the tea and coffee is on the go. Uh, best of all, we have the amazing planes and the red arrows. At least this year, it won't be rained off. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, also, Dave. Uh, hello, Dave. A request to the show um, to the Shoreham uh, Stenying and Cutfield Sussex Class Car Group. Please say hi to Dave, Kathy, Bob, Claire, Annie, and Brian. Living, driving, loving driving. That should say around your beautiful island. Uh, such a welcoming place. We've got more dedications and more mentions coming up very shortly. More details on the air display coming up very shortly, and it's all right here on Liberation Radio.
It's Millennium. It's Robbie. It's Liberation Radio. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this beautiful, they're all beautiful, sunny. They're all sunny. It's Jersey, after all. It's a sunny afternoon in Jersey. It's the Jersey International Air Display 2023. I'm Murray Norton taking you through. Holly Woolitron. Hello, Holly. Uh, a message to Simon and Dave watching today. Massive aviation fans. Uh, and Julie Howgate as well at the air show today. Would love a shout out uh, for my late father, Obin Bryce. He was named after St. Ovens Bay. Fantastic. He was the commanding officer of uh, 470 Falkirk Air Training Corps. Wow. What a great connection that is. Thank you very much indeed for that. Keep the dedications coming. We'll try and get through as many as we can throughout the afternoon. With me is Ben Denell, who is our show commentator for today, with all the details of all the planes. Uh, the running order for today. Let's just take a tiptoe through that. What have we got? OK, Murray. Well, yes, we start off the display proper, as it were, following on from that fly pass from the Poseidon that we've just mm -hmm. seen, with the French Air Force Patrie de France, their national aerobatic team, in their 70th anniversary year, their only British Isles display of the season, and they will be on slot at 5 to 2. Right. Then from that, we have got an act that builds on something we've seen at Jersey for several seasons past, the Jet Pits. Do you remember Rich Goodwin with his muscle yes, pits? Yes, yes. Well, he's now got the permission and all the approvals to fit the two little jet engines onto the fuselage sides of that tiny biplane to give it the <laughs> most astonishing <laughs> and almost incongruous performance because you're not used to seeing a flying machine that looks like that with the sound of jet engines accompanying it. The man is mad, but we love it. It is a fantastic spectacle. Yep. He'll be on after the Patrie. There'll be a short gap between the Patrie and Rich, but Rich will be on at 20 to 3. And then from that, we're into one of the nostalgic highlights of the Jersey International Air Display, the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. And we're hoping today to see the full complement of the Lancaster, Hurricane and Spitfire. That's the one that always gets me, and it's the, it's the bit that I always dedicate to my grandfather. He was on the ground crew at Biggin Hill during the Battle of Britain, and uh, I've got some great photographs of him maintaining, patching up and working with them. In fact, the other day, and I, I don't know if I told you this, but I, the other day I, I was going through some of his belongings and I found the menu card for Christmas 1940, Big and oh, Hill. Oh, wow. And it was their Christmas lunch menu. Oh, tremendous. They ate reasonably well, I have to tell you. Um, so uh, so you know, still finding bits of memorabilia. So I think for an awful lot of people, that is the emotional moment of the display, isn't it? It certainly is. And the BBMF will be joining us at just after 5 to 3. After that, we've got the Royal Air Force Parachute Display Team, the Falcons, joining us for the first time in a few years here at the Jersey International Air Display and we can already see some of their ground support team setting up on the sand just adjacent to the Radisson Hotel just off to Is the left of our commentary point. Is that luminous bit of strip that you see down there? Yes, exactly, and the flag in front of them. That's the drop zone they'll be using later on. Well, and looking forward to that. It's going to be good. And there's some music for that we just heard, which is we're really excited about that. Yep, that'll be just before 20 past three. And Excellent. then we're on to another Warbird, the PBY-5A Catalina amphibious flying boat from plane sailing at Duxford, being flown by a Jerseyman today in the form of John Harmsworth who grew up here and learned to fly here and we'll be telling you more about him when the Catalina displays at about a quarter to four. Graceful as ever as the Catalina and I know a few, a few people have been up in the Catalina recently Ah, yes, and, uh, and we're really excited about that. Indeed, I've been up in the Catalina before, uh, which is slightly unusual for me, given the fact that I, I have to confess I don't actually enjoy flying all that much. <laughs> but it is a marvellous machine, and we're very pleased to have it back here with us at Jersey once again, as we are the act that follows that, which I think has been to almost every edition of this event since it went international in 1997. Our huge friends from the Musée Européen de l'Aviation de Chasse at Montélimar with the OV-10 Bronco. Ah, oh, that's something else. Tremendous. Tremendous aircraft. That's, that's the bit with the tailplane is attached to the wings. Uh, the uh, twin-tailed aircraft, that's yes. That's the one twin, I meant. Twin yeah. turboprop, <laughs> yes, which goes through, again, rather like the jet pits, a performance that you would not expect from an aeroplane looking like that. Right. Uh, then we're on to one of, one, a crowd favourite. Oh, yes. Huge crowd favourite. Before we get to the, you know, the, the showstopper at the end, the Saab J35 Draken, which is noisy, powerful, a bit of beef, isn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. Our only solo fast jet of the display, provided, again, by huge friends of the show from the Swedish Air Force mm. historic flight at Sortenas. We are hugely grateful to them for supporting the event again this year with their single seat Draken, which we haven't seen here before in the colour scheme it now wears. It's now in an earlier 
green camouflage scheme. It was in grey the last time we saw it. It's now been repainted, and so we've got that aircraft looking a bit different, something for the enthusiasts to really enjoy. The Draken solo just after ten past four. Then at 4.25, as if we couldn't think of anything to top yeah. the Draken, it's the Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, with their eight Hawks. They are here in the island already, and what other way could we possibly have to bring the Jersey International Air Display to a close, taking us through until just after a quarter to five, but as you say, Murray, the best finale possible. Excellent. Looking forward to that display, and don't forget on Liberation Radio, the after-show party from five right the way through the evening. We'll be playing tunes and reminiscing back, and obviously will be uh, keeping your evening going, whether you're having a barbecue, whatever you're up to this evening. Liberation Radio are playing all the songs that you'll want to hear later on. And talking of music, let's have a, let's, let's have a tune or two now, eh? We'll have one of those and then we'll come back and we'll talk some more because we've got plenty to look forward to with this afternoon's 2023 Jersey International Air Display. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Mike Higgins. Uh, Mike Higgins has been running this show for, well, I first came here in 1998, so that was 25 years ago. So, uh, Mike, how long have you been running this show? Okay, 26 years fully, and I was a deputy in the previous year. So, uh, yeah, a long time. In fact, you forget how long it is. Well, you look pretty sprightly, so I dare say we've a few more years to go yet, have we? Uh, well, I keep on saying the only way they're going to take well, the only way I'm going to leave the air display is take me out in a box. So, as long as my health is there, yeah. Well, I suppose, like us, you've got to be a bit of an anorak with aircraft. You must love aircraft. You must have a passion for them. I do. And, in fact, this is the thing I like about the Jersey show. When it's a full-blown show, and we've got the full funding, we are looking for all the things that are different. And uh, I know for next year, providing we can get the funding, we've got a range of aircraft we've already negotiated on. 
and hope to have here next year. So, and they're things, it's things that they people don't normally see uh, in British shows. Now, I'm glad you said that. It leads me on to that very point. Uh, you have got a reputation for bringing in different things. Uh, I mean, just starting the show with the Poseidon w was a little bit special. But proximity to France, you, you do attract acts from there. So tell us a little bit about what we've got today and some of the ones in the past from France. OK. Uh, we've had a lot uh, from France over the years. In fact, um, that's one of the things that does make it unique. Uh, this year, uh, we've only got two items from France. One I'm extremely pleased with is the Poitou de France. And the reason why, it's their 70th anniversary this year. And we're the only show in Britain that's got them. So we consider that an honor, especially as they phoned us to say, could they come? <laughs> so I was delighted, by the way. And uh, we've also got the Bronco uh, from Montpellier. And the Bronco guys have been here as long as I've been here. And I think if I ever said you couldn't come, they'd come anyway. And they. They're great guys, and they do a brilliant display. Now, I remember, I'm a bit of an old airliner fan, my first time here, that we had the Jersey Airlines Heron and the uh, the Dart Herald that was doing the flower run. So, uh, obviously, neither of those aircraft still flying, but, but where are, do you know where they are now? Well, the Heron is on the ground at Jersey Airport. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's the cost of flying it and the insurance and maintenance, and they haven't got a large group, unfortunately. Um, I used to be part of it. In fact, the Otis Bay used to have a share in it. And we were going to use it as like an admiral's barge. So when we have um, aircraft that can't land at Jersey, so for example, F-16s normally can't land at Jersey Airport. The only time we have had them was when the Norwegian Air Force came over with brake shoes. So if we get the Belgian F-16s or we get other high-performance jets, we'll either use Landivisio or Sherberg or Yeovilton. And we used to fly crews back and forth for briefings and also for the after show parties, etc. It isn't really aviation, but uh, I do know, Mike, you've been part of the politics here. Um, your parliamentary system is a bit different from ours, and uh, I know that's caused some, some difficulties with the air show, but isn't that what happens everywhere? It's true. Um, yes, we, we have our own parliament here, and Jersey is semi independent of the UK, and obviously everyone knows about taxes being different. Um, but the UK is responsible for defence and major fo uh, foreign policy. Other than that, we're self-governing. And uh, the Parliament um, is made up of uh, 49 members uh, who are all now deputies. I was a deputy in the Parliament for 14 years. And it certainly helped at times. It can be a hindrance at other times. Um, after 14 years, I'd had enough. And uh, I wanted actually to get back to dealing with the air show because um, funding is always an issue. And I didn't have the time when I was in politics to always get what I wanted. So um, I've come out. And unfortunately, uh, we have a new government in at the moment who, of course, there's no end of hassle this year. I'm hoping that that is it. And in fact, certainly the way the island has rallied round uh, to help us, um, for your listeners, basically what happened was um, the government give a grant and they put it out to tender invited people all over the UK spent three and a half months doing this in which case we were in limbo and um, then offered us a grant which was less than we needed and we'd lost some other sponsorship in the meantime and the air display we were close to cancelling and we ended up having a public appeal and this is the end of July it finished on the 4th of August and we were trying to get 70 firms or individuals who could afford £5,000 and to give us that money to help us put on a show. And uh, we almost got there. We got 50000 from the companies and the individuals and the government came up with another twenty. Um, but the costs have gone up even more. And we, we, we've been watching pennies this year, but we've learned a lot. We've got a lot of goodwill. A lot of people want the air show to succeed, want it to go ahead, and they're coming to us. So I think next year we should get the funding up. And uh, then, I say, I'm not disappointed with this year's show. We, we've got some good items. But the really special ones I wanted, we're going to have to wait another year. Oh, dare I ask <laughs> what you're hoping to get next year? No, I don't want the competition to know. <laughs> uh, th th that is a very good point. No, in the UK, there are certain displays that get uh, classic things as well. And there's some that I've been after and I've been watching a long time.
Right. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to recall uh, one of the things that sometimes is allowed at seaside shows in the UK is firing of flares from the aircraft. Um, are you allowed to do that here? Yeah. We've got nothing this year, but uh, when the Belgians come over with their Vipers, yes, they're dumping their flares and uh, others do as well. So it's special permissions we have to get and so on. And, um, but also being a seaside show, we've been getting things like the Draken that's here this year. And they make such a difference. And I love those airplanes. The Swedes have built fantastic airplanes. And I can tell you, we're already planning next year with them. As long as the funding, sir. But um, no, we try to get things as say. We, we've had things like the Noratlas uh, from the south of France. We've had the Yunkers 52 from Le Fer to Lay. Uh, we've had Meshmet 109s from uh, the continent. Um, what else have we had? We have the Flamonts which people don't see in the UK. Uh, and they do a very good display. Um, let me think what else. Over the years we've had all sorts, inc including some that never made it. They were trying to get here. Have you ever heard of the Harel Dubois? The, the 42, HP 42. Uh, long, big wing, yeah. high aspect ratio. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He got into crosswind, uh, not crosswind, headwinds, and never made it, but he was coming. So we always look for things that other shows don't have. And providing we have the money we can afford to do that, uh, in recent years we've been struggling, but um, as I say, uh, well, as I say, we've still got a good show. Um, and you still have the heart to carry on putting more on? Well, actually, this year is the first year in 26 years when I had the thought, why do I bother? Yeah, we had a, a lot, a lot of hassles. And that thought went away pretty quickly and I've got a very very good team in the island and who came to the island to help us put on the show and they regalvanized me and uh, as I say a government house last night at the reception for all the crews and everyone else um, uh, we yes we are definitely going for next year I'll be doing next year and they will they'll have to carry me, me out in a box but we'll get back to what we were in 2013 with the height of the Jersey Air Show. And lastly, we ought to allow you to say a thank you to some of the sponsors. Um, I know sponsors are important to you here, and maybe you're slightly luckier than some UK shows. It's a slightly more well-off area, but uh, are there any sponsors you'd particularly like to say thank you to? I would, but I don't have the list <laughs> with me. Um, and you'd put somebody's nose out of joint if you missed oh, them out, I suppose. Oh, definitely, because um, the reaction in the island when we put out our public appeal... Was I confident we were going to succeed? No, I was not. But they came forward quite rapidly, actually. And um, so we got that money. And I'm confident they're going to be with us going forward, which is nice to know. Um, so, no, unfortunately, I can't name one or two. I'd mention some and I'd forget the others and uh, it'd be wrong to do so. Well, let's just say to our viewers, it's a fabulous island to come and uh, have a few days in. So if you fancy coming over next year, um, drop Mike an email and say what aircraft you'd like to see when you come. And uh, Oh, put it in the chat now. Yeah, come on, put it in the chat now. And by the way, if any of you would like to sponsor the Jersey Air Show, please let me know. We'd welcome you here and treat you as a royal guest. There's bound to be a knight in shining armour out there somewhere, so. but um, so. we're rather hoping they'll sponsor Plains TV first, but uh, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's another issue. We're all in the same yeah. boat. Well, thank you, Mike, for, uh, for, for coming, and thank you for putting on such a wonderful show for so long, and I'm just so pleased to hear we might have a few more years yet. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah. I'm not planning, as I say, of uh, being taken out of the box yet. Wonderful stuff. Thank you. Um, I will do. Um, what I'm just introducing, Mike, is... Um, yeah, that's fine. No, no, that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to introduce a, a little video that we've got planned. Um, as we say, uh, we, Mike does draw a lot of acts from France. Well, a few years ago, we went to Le Fert Allais, which is one of the uh, best-known French shows. And, uh, and there's some quite interesting... Um, performers there. The, the one that was very special was the Fock of Wolf 190. So uh, if we queued up, would you like to play uh, at the last time we went to Le Fert Allais? We're just south of Paris. It's Duxford and the Shuttleworth Collection all rolled into one. Welcome to La Fert Allais.
Yes, we've never been with it to uh, La Fertile, and it's the hurricane's first visit. I think it's probably the first time actually this hurricane has crossed the coast of France. Well, of course, the first thing you've got to do is to check her all over very, very thoroughly indeed and make sure that absolutely everything is taken care of. With these old warbirds, of course, you can never be 101% certain, but check the condition of it, make sure they're clean and so on so you can really look at it. And then after that, it's down to the pilot, and uh, he, we're fortunately having Stu Goldspring flying it for us this weekend, and, of course, he is a superb pilot. He stopped and refuelled. Uh, part way. In fact, he probably could just about have done it without refueling, but being a cautious pilot, which I thoroughly approve of, he stopped and put a bit more juice in it. Oh, it is the most fantastic setting for a start. In, in amongst the trees and the, on the top of the hill here, it's a perfect setting. The sun, of course, is shining like we couldn't believe, so that's another absolute plus for the whole show. And then, of course, the individual aircraft. We've just been seeing the Fokker Wolf 190 doing a bit of practicing. And, of course, that was the aeroplane that our pilots, with due respect to them, during the war were absolutely terrified of. When I bought it, it was uh, fitted with the uh, contra-rotating prop, and the engine was not original, nothing was original. Uh, that's why I, I, I bought it, because the price was a very low price at that point. But in my mind, I decided to put it back to the original version. But I, I used to have another Spitfire Mark 14 10 years ago. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I sold it. But I was a little bit sad, and I must say, in my heart, the Spit is very different than the other one. So uh, I'm very happy to have this Mark 19, very rare now. The reason why she is not flying now is when the, the insurance and another one is the uh, technical inspection which has to be performed on the airplane. We, are, we have a lot of supporters on the airplane and uh, unfortunately all the supporters they cannot help us very well on this side. We hope the, uh, on the future to have this airplane flying as soon as possible. Well, I do hope you enjoyed those few snippets of uh, the, the Fertale show that we, re um, we covered a few years ago. Um, it is an amazing location. Um, they do have some amazing aircraft there. It's not that far from here, so if there's anything in that collection uh, that you'd like to see at Jersey, then uh, put it in the chat now. Um, Mike is still with us. I'll uh, draw it to his attention and perhaps he'll put it on the shopping list uh, for next year. Um, the show is going to resume at... 5 to 2, so a little over 20 minutes with the Patrie France which is going to be tremendous having Patrie France and Red Arrows here at the show um, I do remember a show a few years ago where Patrie France, Red Arrows and 
Frenchy Tricolori were all at the same show. And I asked the French leader, which is the best team? And he said, aha, the best team with 10 aircraft is the Frenchy Tricolori. The best team with 9 aircraft is the Red Arrows. The best team with 8 aircraft is the Patry France. So uh, I think that was very diplomatic and, and probably absolutely true. Um, what we're going to show you now is uh, a clip from the show, the Nature Day show at Ostrovo, which is where Ian is. Um, I should just say we don't have Alex with us today. Um, um, sorry, we don't have Adam with us today. Um, he's had a family bereavement. It's the funeral today. We're, our thoughts are very much with him and his family. But he is joining us at the weekend at Duxford. So, uh, and he's really become part of the team now. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to having Adam back at the weekend. So, Ian is in Czechia. It used to be called the Czech Republic. I, I hope I've got that right. It is now called Czechia. He is with Andy and... Who else is it? It's just Andy and Ian, I think. Yeah. Uh, NATO Days. NATO Days has become a very important show. Um, NATO, of course, in Europe is important, and uh, in what was the Czech Republic, that's also important. We're going to show a few clips from the 2014 show, um, where they had the B-52. I think that was the year we had our cockpit cameras in, in the B-52, but it has flown there several times. Um, I, I, I love our little intro shots, our little um, highlight shots. I'd love to know if you like them as well, because we could certainly show more of them. They only run for a couple of minutes. They do have music, but that's that's okay for a short clip. So uh, let's have a look at uh, NATO Days, and we are live streaming NATO Days this weekend. And wasn't that last little shot of the uh, Viggen disappearing up into the, the the clouds with that little trail behind him? Was that a fabulous shot? I, I actually shot that myself, and I remember having a little gasp as it went through the camera. Uh, that's what I enjoy about this job. That you, you see things all the time that are, oh, wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? And uh, I try and remember a lot of them as well, but... Um, uh, they, they sort of disappear into the mind a bit. Ooh, where was it we saw the Vulcan do that? Where was it we saw the South African 747 do that? Um, well, one of the places we've, we, we've seen a heck of a lot of wonderful action over the years is Farnborough. Um, sadly, Farnborough as an air display isn't what it used to be. Um, it's nothing to do with the organisation there and the, and the job that the air show does. It's just the location with so much... Uh, uh, so much sort of crowd uh, and building around it that um, for safety reasons they've got to be uh, be very careful. Anyway, so we've got uh, a clip of Farnborough coming up now. I'm trying to remember what year it was. I think it was the year the 787 made its first ever appearance. And, oh yes, I'm just remembering. Um, I was tasked on that Sunday morning to go and get the 787 arriving. Held up on the motorway with a, a car on fire. That was a sight. And I literally got on site, got the tripod up, got the camera on the tripod, turned it on, and there was the, uh, the, the 787 straight in front of me. It, there was three seconds later, and I would have missed it. But the incredible thing, looking at the clip, is you, you'll see I got the very best spot to uh, as a cameraman. I couldn't believe that I was last there, but got the very best spot, because journalists don't generally speaking know where to set themselves if an aeroplane's flying and um, I got a lovely shot of all them pointing at the uh, the camera so uh, here's a look at Farnborough from a few years ago when the the 787 flew
Hi, I'm Gareth Stringer. Welcome to sunny Hampshire, where after a very busy weekend at Gloucestershire for the Royal International Air Tattoo, Planes TV, with the rest of the aerospace world, has come here. One of the most iconic air shows of all time. This is Farnborough 2010. In the short highlights video from day one, we'll take a close look at the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, which arrived yesterday, its first trip to the UK. We'll speak to the crew about the trip over and have a look inside this wonderful new airliner. We'll also talk to Eddie Forrester of Aerobytes, supporter of the Vulcan and one of the people instrumental in keeping the aircraft in the air. Finally, a quick look at BAE's Typhoon display, fully armed, fully loaded and very impressive. My name is John Friscorn. I'm uh, one of the Boeing pilots on board the uh, 787. I was lucky enough to be on the flight from Seattle to uh, Farnborough. We set the auto brakes to max, uh, and that's the max automatic braking that the airplane could do. And we touched down and deployed the uh, thrust reversers to idle. By the time the thrust reversers came out, we were almost stopped. So it wasn't a max effort braking, but it was it was uh, it was close. It's a huge milestone, um, first oceanic crossing for any 787. To come to a place like this, the Farnborough Air Show, and show this airplane off, I mean, we're, we're very proud of it. Um, it's an incredible airplane, and you know, to, to be able to show it off with the, the people who actually work in the program, uh, the engineers and the pilots, every, and the ground crew, everybody's working very hard. And this is a little bit of a bonus, you know, for everybody that's, that's working very hard. This is airplane number three, it's ZA-003, it's three of five we have in flight test right now. The program will have a total of six. The main role of this particular airplane, airplane number three, is to test the environmental control system and the passenger experience. So that's why as you look around you'll see things like microphones on the seat and little pads to touch, test the vibration. First thing you notice is the blue sky on the ceiling, the blue light. We found that that really makes it help feel more open. Um, the windows are 60% bigger than airplanes that are on, out flying today. And the windows, you can see the tops of them are above the seat backs. So even if I'm sitting in the middle row, I can still see outside and know that I'm flying. Hi, uh, my name's Eddie Forrester, I'm the Managing Director of Aerobytes and since first flight, or return to flight, we've been the main corporate sponsor of the Avro Vulcan. Talking of selfish pleasures, today I do have um, the privilege of having my second flight with the blades next to the Vulcan. Um, last time was a year and a half ago, um, I enjoyed every second of that. Um, I think today is going to be the same, but when you're up there in the air with that, underneath, you, you know, I'm a physicist, I look up at that huge wing and there's nothing underneath. How does it fly? The Vulcan flies because tens of thousands of people give smaller amounts, um, but they love her as much as we do. Um, but that's not enough to keep her going. So we've, for the last few years, we've been topping that amount up each year. And we've, we've got some great publicity from that. We really have. Um, some goodwill even from our competitors who are impressed um, that we've been what seem to be benevolent. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, that's one of the moments you live for is that the weather was perfect, the reds with the smoke, and beautiful shape of the Vulcan just cruising in. An unforgettable moment. Hi, I'm uh, Nat Makepeace. I'm an experimental test pilot for BA Systems, and uh, I am the Typhoon Project pilot for the UK. I'm uh, flying with three fuel tanks, four 1,000-pound bombs, four AMRAMs and two ASRAMs. It has quite a huge thing because mass uh, in aircraft has quite a dramatic effect. So I'm getting airborne 21,000 kilograms, 21 tonnes, and so you really do notice it. The nice thing and the reason why I'm doing it is because the power of this aeroplane, the thrust of the engines and the exceptionally good flight control systems actually allow me to do that quite easily and hopefully make it look good for everyone, but you'll have to be the judge. I'm the only one that doesn't get to see the display, so uh, you'll have to tell me afterwards. Uh, well, F-22 for me is a different 
type of aircraft. Um, it obviously has stealth, which is not a major feature of this aeroplane, although there are some technologies. Um, it can do certain things this aeroplane can't do, and you'll see that today. But then equally, you know, I'd like to see it displaying with uh, sort of £6,000 plus worth of ordnance to see how good this display is then. It's been a fantastic day one at Farnborough, beautiful weather, great flying displays and the prospect of plenty more to come this week. So keep coming back for more videos from Farnborough with Plains TV. Delighted to be joined now by uh, Murray Norton, who is the local voice of Liberation Radio. Yep. And uh, Liberation Radio are putting out the PA today, so they'll be joining our channel. And um, you're going to be telling us a lot about aircraft, Murray. Well, I, I don't know a great deal about aircraft. I know a little bit, but there's people like yourself and, and people like Ben Donnell, who's the real expert. And that's why I have an expert alongside me at, at all times, just, just so that I can, I can introduce them and then look good just by standing in their shadow. I think that's what I do best. So you say, oh, that looks like a pretty aeroplane. What is it, Ben? That, do you know, that's a question that actually is in my script, and I keep it in there every year. Um, unfortunately, I've picked up a little bit of knowledge, which is a dangerous thing, and, and I've done that because uh, I've been commentating on the air display for many, many years um, as the host, if you like. So um, I think the first one I did with, with Alistair Lazell was, was probably 25 years ago, um, and then over successive experts and commentators, Melvin Hiscock, of course, who was a very, very close personal friend of mine, uh, is sadly no longer with us, and Ben for the last few years. So, so I've done a few of the air displays. I don't think anything sinks in from one year to the next, but, uh, but I still come back and still do it. Well, you're probably proud to say that you're not actually an anorak, but um, just tell us an aircraft that has especially impressed you or you particularly like to see. Um, I've, I've got uh, I've got various emotions on aircraft. I, I grew up uh, at my at a lot of the time at my gr at my grandfather and grandmother's place. My grandparents who lived in Farnborough, and so I saw an awful lot of aircraft there. So I saw the first flights of, of Concorde. I saw the Red Arrows when they were Nats. Uh, I saw the Lightning Lockheed, which really gave me just and the Phantom with the with the two after burning glows. That so those were the ones that still give me goosebumps. Uh, and my my grandfather on my father's side was on the ground crew at Biggin Hill during the battle. Britain uh, and I've got an awful lot of memories and photographs of him uh, patching up hurricanes and mostly Spitfires uh, and so you know that little bit of knowledge and enthusiasm I've got is based from a deep emotion uh, connected to my family and I think this is the same for most people they look at a plane and they go back to an era that reminds them of a good place and I think that that's that's the bit that we don't sometimes think about airplanes and when we're looking at air shows is what it all means to us personally and where we go back to so I think that's a, that's a great thing. Yeah, that so uh, hits the mark, doesn't it? Um, maybe in the chat you just tell us what it is that's uh, brought you guys into, and ladies, into aviation. Is there something in the past, uh, maybe in the family, maybe something you saw at an air show? So tell us that in the chat. But um, just, just to finish off, Liberation Radio. I'm, I'm guessing I know what liberation means in the particular context of Jersey. But just give us that background, please, Murray. Yeah, Liberation Radio. Um, it's uh, it's an online radio station. It's got three channels, and the the real the real selling point of it is that you can listen to it anywhere. There's an app on the phone to download Liberation Radio, um, and we have listeners right around the globe. Although it does tend to point to Jersey and Guernsey. And uh, it's run by three people who are all uh, Jersey-based, Jersey, uh, Jersey known in Jersey, myself, Paul and Matt. And uh, we have three channels, so you can choose the music that you want. You've got hits playing the current stuff, you've got classics playing the stuff that I tend to like, which is from the 80s and the 70s, and then you've got gold, which is 60s and 70s. Um, and you sometimes can't get that continuous music stream from anywhere else. And we com constantly get people going, oh, I'd forgotten about that song, how good is that? So I do The Breakfast Show Monday to Friday, and when you listen to me, you can choose any of those channels and what's clever because we're very digital and, and high-tech is you still get me presenting the breakfast show but the music may be different 
So uh, give it a try sometime. Listen to Liberation Radio, and it's great to have as many people alongside as possible. And obviously, you know, having you guys along today, you get to you get to show the visual. We get to describe it a little bit. I think it's a perfect marriage. Yeah, that's tremendous. And uh, radio is a big part of my past. I grew up with the pirate radio stations and the the freedom, the fight for free radio era. So just to get in a political plug. But uh, thanks very much, Murray. We'll let you get back, and uh, we're going to have a quick look now at the international air tattoo, which is. Uh, a big deal for the Plains TV. We've been covering it now for eight years. And uh, have a look at the 2015 International Air Tattoo while we wait for the Patrie de France. to the Jersey International Air Display for the first time in several years. Their national aerobatic team kicks the flying programme proper off. And to talk you through their display, we are delighted to be joined by Aspirant Julie Oziol and Aspirant Lucy Chapman. This team, let it be reminded, a unit of the French Air and Space Force whose mission is to highlight the excellence of an aviators and military who participate daily in the defense of the France and its citizens. Composed of, of approximately 80 people representing all the know-how of the Air and Space Force, pilots, mechanics, operation agent, photographer, communication officer, and administrative agent, this unit this unit proudly carries high the French color and its aeronautic throughout the world. We are really honored to perform in front of you all in Jersey today. On the ground today is also present the Lieutenant Colonel Nicolas Mimari, who is in charge of um, the security team and the aesthetic of the show.
This year, the patrol is led by the Commander Aurelien de Clare, a fighter pilot on Dassault Rafale, counting more than 2,100 flight hours. He is the one you are going to hear guiding the team with his voice for the next 25 minutes. Just wait a few more moments and you will see them arrive in the sky. Now it's time to look up and greet La Patrouille de France 2023. Each year, the team embraced the challenge to create a new exhibition while changing one third of its pilot and changing the position of the other. This year, the new pilots are Captain Godet and Captain Trois, respectively Atos 2 and Atos 3. Together, they form the first wing of the patrol directly on both sides of the leaders. You can see Atos 4 at the back point of this diamond shaped figure. Um, normally, it is the Commandant Julien de Court, who is a fighter pilot, at the ed was at the head of the Couteau Delta Patrol in 2021. Unfortunately, he couldn't be available to fly today, so this is the substitute pilot, Captain Romano Senior, who takes his place today. The captain, Leopold Metzger, is Atto 7 and our auto left wingman. He has been part of the patrol for four years and this year is his last one. Atto 5 and Atto 7 are considered the leader's right hand men for they, for they are the most experienced team members. Together, they create this year's new series. Captain Amara is Atos 8, fond of music and astronomy. He was one of the first fighter pilots to be an instructor on PC-21 in Cognac.
As a seven and Atos eight from the duo of the outer wingman, they are the most destined aircraft from the leader in most formation, and this is why their actions must be accurately anticipated. For instance, when they are in a formation called Diamond, they do not see the leader. So they have to rely on the leader on the leader's voice to guide them and keep them in their trajectory. The aircrafts in front of you are now going to carry out a very dynamic sequence during which the outer wingmen are going to perform several loop to the loops and the other will do some barrels and reach the leader's aircraft in less than 30 seconds. After this beautiful flyover in a formation called Large Arrow, the aircraft are now coming from the right in its favorite formation called Diamond. For your information, the Patriot de France has been flying on Alpha Jet since 1981. Reliable and chosen for its handling ability and, and adaptability, it is very well maintained by our team of mechanics. This year is for us a very special opportunity to evaluate how far we have come in the last 70 years. 70 years and hundreds of men and women who have built this very artistic and technical ballet. It is a reflection of the French Air and Space Force, which find its strength in its ability to navigate between heritage and modernity. To celebrate its anniversary, La Patrouille de France has created a very special and unique figure.
Under your applause, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of our 70th anniversary, here it is. Long live the Patrouille de France. Now it's time to switch to the synchronization part with the outstanding figures performed by Artos. We wanted to start it with a huge hurt and dedicate it to you all present here today in Jersey. Look in front of you, they are coming. But this hurt is now going to explode for the Big Bang. Led by the first solo, Atos V, the captain Olivier, he is about to give the top for, his for this particular maneuver during which the aircrafts are about to brush red patches each other before separating. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on your right, Atos 6 and Atos 8, and on your left, Atos 5 and Atos 7. The aircrafts are ready for a face-to-face -face in this first crossing called Pac-Man. The pilots in their third year on the left, and the pilots in the second year on your right. The way is now clear for the two solos, Atos 5 on your right and Atos 6 on your left, to cross again, only a few meters away from each other while their cumulative speed is going to exceed 1,000 kilometers per hour. Now it is time for this, the other six aircraft to join and present the sheriff. On the order of the leader, Atos 4 on the back, Atos 2 and 3 on the side, and Atos 7 and 8 turning around them. This figure is made possible thanks to the extraordinary abilities of the Alpha Jet, which allows the pilot to fly with precision in configurations impossible for the other fighter jet aircraft.
The two solos are now going to be back to show you their skillfulness with a figure called Dore, in reference to the Cartouche Dore Patrol in, in memory of the years they shared in this beautiful patrol together. In just a few seconds, on your left. Now you can see in your right the two outer wingmen that are going to perform La Casa, alternating phase of flying upside down and flying on the belly, and Atos 8 is going to spiral around Atos 7. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this deserves another range of applause. The specificity of the next figure is that the pilot must separate without really seeing each other, trusting only their instinct. In fact, thanks to all the training during the winter, they are able to separate symmetrically without seeing each other. like an exploding bomb! The two solos are now going to be back to perform an inversion crossing. That is to say that at a six, smoking blue on your left is going to pass on the back only 30 meters away from the ground and cross at a five on your right, smoking red. And then they will reverse their position. Wait for it! Top! Now you are about to witness a very poetic part of this year's series. For a pilot, dreaming is at the core of their mission. The dream to fly, to draw beautiful curves in the sky, Thus, it is only natural that the patrol has decided to support the charity organization Rêve, which literally means dream in French, for the season 2023. This organization supports sick children and helps them fulfill their dream. Look a bit to your right, you can see them arrive.
And now, to your right, the two solo are also going to highlight the dream part so dear to us with a figure called Rêveur. Now a little quiz. Do you think you can guess how many aircrafts are going to be present for the next figure? Be patient and wait for them to come back. Right now on your left. Indeed, six of them executed this Persian, a very technique figure, in order to stay hidden one behind the other and give the impression that there is only one plane. Sir, ladies and gentlemen, the French aerobatic team is very proud to fly its anniversary show here in Jersey, especially in September, for the Battle of Britain commemoration. We have a thought for the few who fought 83 years ago for our liberty and to whom we owe so much. Long life to Jersey International Air Show. Vive la patrouille de France. Et vive la France. Terminé. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader of this year's patrol, the Commandant Aurelien de Clare, who spoke to you. Now, just before the final figure of this 2023 series. In order to say a final goodbye to you, they're coming straight forward. Look up to the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause for the Patrouille de France 2023.
The air show is now finished. Thank you very much for your presence. We hope that you enjoyed it and now that it tried to include all the mission of the French Air and Space Force. It is also important for us to represent and pay tribute to our brother in arms, but also share the value that are due to us. Commitment, rigor, suppressing yourself. You can follow us on our social media to share your picture of the show and exchange with us. Thank you very much, Jersey. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think you will agree that was one amazing display. Thank you so much. Show your appreciation with another big round of applause. <laughs> tremendous, tremendous, tremendous display. Uh, you're listening to Liberation Radio. Uh, we've got more coming from the uh, International Air Display very, very shortly right here on Liberation Radio. Uh, so stay right with us and we'll be back with Ben and more from the display in just a few minutes. Well, it's Fleetwood Mac on Liberation Radio. You're listening to Liberation Radio. It's the Channel Islands More Music Radio Station, and you'll find us on the Liberation Radio app and on liberationradio.co.uk right here in the Channel Islands. Why don't give us a listen? Uh, in the meantime, uh, some people we don't forget about. See what I did there? Uh, Anna Houchet. Hello, Anna. 
Anna Houchet says, can you please say hello to uh, Amber and Chris? Thank you. No, thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, Rihanna, uh, she says, a message. All the teachers want to wish all the children at St. Christopher's School a lovely afternoon watching the air display. Emma Lamar, that's Beau's mum, uh, she said, uh, can you give a shout out to the Cubs from the First Jersey St. Juan Sea Scout group who are watching the air display? Uh, they're on the lower park grass just behind you. Yeah, I know. Mel's on her way there any minute now. Um, also... I'm going to get these all out of the way as quickly as I can. Uh, Claire Hooley's been uh, emailing us. My partner James and I, says Claire, uh, here in Jersey, celebrating our first wedding anniversary and love a shout-out. It's our very first time seeing the French team. Weren't they fantastic? John Carpenter. Hey, John. He said, can you please give a shout-out to the boys chilling at Belle Crute on the Dreamweaver, especially miserable Marsham, who's <laughs> smiling now. He's got a cider in his hand. Uh, Robert Widdersen. He says, please mention Tracy Williamson from Stoke, whose birthday it is today. Rob, we've done so at the air display. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, would you wish Ben Caesar a happy 89th birthday? Kelly, Kerry Renoff is also celebrating her 12th birthday. We'll mention that. Harley Caesar. Uh, three little boys uh, says uh, Harley uh, says Leo, Oscar, and Harvey are listening. It'd be lovely if they get a shout out. Ben Caesar is also celebrating his fifth anniversary with uh, husband Quincy, if you wouldn't mind. And Harley Caesar also says another little person, unexpected guest, Callum. Please mention Callum as well. Uh, we've got more shout outs as well from Robert Andrew Scullen. Liberation, please give a shout out to my beautiful partner Lorraine Turmel. We met 40 years ago while serving together in the British Army. Over 40 years ago, we reconnected three years ago during COVID. I was in Australia and Lorraine in Jersey. I moved to Jersey in 2021 so we could be together. We celebrate our third air show together. That's how you celebrate in anniversaries of air shows. And Karen Greenfield, can you do a big shout out to Betty from Liverpool? We're watching the air show on the beach today. So, well, you, you have yourself a brilliant and safe and wonderful time down there. Uh, now, we're going to find out what Mel has been up to. Uh, Mel was talking to uh, Paul Bentley uh, from the Jersey Mil Military Group, but also talking to the Sea Scouts. So let's find out what she was up to with the Sea Scouts first.
It's Liberation Radio. It's Murray Norton with you right through the afternoon right here at the Jersey International Air Display 2023. What a joy. We're shielding ourselves from the sun as opposed to the rain. Isn't that a lovely change? I uh, hope you're enjoying your afternoon wherever you happen to be, whether you're down here on the avenue listening to us live or whether you're listening to us on one of the flotilla of boats out there. If you're one of the, on one of those... Uh, little vessels bobbing up and down in the bay uh, do send us a little uh, note, send us an email you can uh, go to liberationradio.co.uk and uh, you can then uh, on the web inquiry form fill out a dedication uh, get in touch with us and we will do our best to give you a mention out there like we can do for a couple of people before I go over to, uh, to Ben for some important information uh, so Adele has been in touch and said, can you give a shout out to the Holiday for Heroes Jersey Visitors? That's Holidays for Heroes Jersey Visitors watching from the RFA tent. Um, we can do just that. And Jersey Hospice, uh, Elisa has been in touch to say, could we have a big shout out for the volunteers of Jersey Hospice enjoying a barbecue together and watching the air display above the bay at Montcouchon. Jersey Hospice, we send our love and our respect and our warm wishes to you this afternoon from Liberation Radio. We hope you're having a great time. And thank you very much indeed for being in touch with us. Right, uh, we have got... Uh, inf- information of things going here, there and everywhere that we've got to mention, Ben. Uh, so, <laughs> so about donations, but before that, drones. Uh, yes, yes. Just a quick reminder, everybody, please don't fly any drones in the vicinity of the air display today. Anywhere you may be around St Obin's Bay and the display area, it is very important because if a drone were to be seen in this local area of airspace, we would unfortunately have to curtail the flying display until such time as it stopped flying. So please, if you have got a drone in the vicinity of the air display area, please don't fly it. And, and if you think that that's, that's oh, just... Yeah something you have to say but just never happens. Just a quick reminder, what's happened in the other island? Uh, yeah, we believe that in fact a drone uh, did delay part of the proceedings at the Guernsey display and it has happened at other air shows yep. around the British Isles as well, so mm. please do take heed of that. And also a couple of other precautions that it's sensible to take today. Make sure that you protect yourselves from the sun. It is absolutely beating down on us and it's scheduled to remain so for the rest of the day and also Take any litter with you, please. Keep it about your personal. Make sure it's safely put in a bin. We don't want any litter causing large concentrations of gulls and other seabirds along the seafront because, again, there's a potential hazard there to flying activity. There is indeed. All right, Ben, thank you very much for those. Uh, let's just talk about the donations because there are, there are Absolutely. A, there's a QR code that people can see on, on posters and signs around here. Now, there's some QR codes for Liberation Radio so you can tune in. They're different. But there is a QR code for the Jersey International Air Display, uh, which uh, will mean that you can then go straight to a page that means you can donate to the Jersey International Air Display. It's no secret that the funding for the Jersey International Air Display has been, um, well, let's just say a little bit last minute and a little bit on and off. And, and we need to support yeah. the air display. We're all loving it. We all, and a, just a little bit goes a long way. So if you can donate and you're in a position to donate to the air display, it will just mean that we can secure next year and future years and even bigger and better displays. Uh, There's a QR code. If you go to the QR code, there's some instructions, Ben. There are indeed. So you can go to uh, two different places to do this. You can, as Murray was saying, scan the QR code. Or you can go to ports.je forward slash pay online. When you've done all this, click on the pay online button. On the payment screen, please add the amount you'd like to donate, your details, including your bank card name and email. And the really important thing is that you need to put J-I-A-D, that's J-I-A-D, standing for Jersey International Air Display, into each of the three fields, customer name, account code and invoice number, and then click on the pay button. Easiest, of course, done via the QR code. You can see these posters saying donate to the Jersey International Air Display all around the showground. So please do do your bit to ensure the continuation and the expansion of this marvellous event because it really is like no other in the British Isles. Excellent, Ben. Thank you very much indeed. It's Liberation Radio. It's Murray with you right the way through the afternoon. The after show party follows straight on from five o'clock here on Liberation Radio where we play lots of party tunes because we know you're going to be kicking back tonight having, you know, maybe maybe a glass of orange juice and a a little sausage roll out in the picnic or maybe a little bit of barbecue. Whatever you're up to this evening, Liberation Radio is the station you should have on and you can have the tunes you want from either hits, classics or gold. It's Liberation Radio live at the air display and we're here right the way through the afternoon and we've got plenty of great uh, action yet to come in the skies. So please stay with us wherever you happen to be.
Live on the Avenue, it's Murray with you on Liberation Radio. Good afternoon to you. Uh, if you want to get in touch at all and uh, have a shout-out, that's very easy, liberationradio.co.uk. Uh, go to the contact form and uh, we'll get the email. We'll make sure right here on the stage that we give you a mention to you and your loved ones, or to anyone else for that matter. And in the meantime, whether you love them or not, I don't care. Uh, in, in the meantime, <laughs> yeah, t- yeah, send us a dedication for the people you don't like. Um, in the meantime... <laughs> Where am I going with this? Oh, yes, I know. Ben, we've got yes. more action in the skies coming up, and I'm very excited about this, the, the jet pits. Yeah, we have. Just a couple of minutes out now. This absolutely incredible little aeroplane. It is airborne. I can see it in the distance across St. Obin's Bay, just looking forward and to the right. Now, we've seen Rich Goodwin, former RAF pilot and commercial pilot here, several times before with the various incarnations of his muscle biplane, his highly modified Pitts S2S special. Well, now... what? One of those has been taken into a quite astonishing new dimension. We'll try as best we can to let you listen to it as much as look at it during this routine because this is a big part of what we're about to see. He has attached two small ATM Lynx jet turbine engines to the sides of the fuselage of this diminutive biplane and they not only give it quite incredible performance. It already had amazing performance in the aerobatic arena. It's now even better, but just the noise of a partially jet-powered biplane is like nothing else I have ever seen. This is true innovation on the airshow circuit. You can see Rich positioning out for his signature low-level opening knife-edge pass to the right-hand end of the display site, and he is going to be bringing it round the bay any moment now with smoke on to open his sensational show. There he goes. It's smoke on for Rich Goodwin with the Jet Pits. We'll be listening out for those jet engines as he climbs away from this first knife-edge pass. And that's absolutely extraordinary. The it UK. is. It's like there's two planes up there. It is, yes. It, Rich has got about 1,640 pounds of thrust at his disposal with the jets engaged. And that roughly equals the display weight of the aeroplane. So, of course, the thrust to weight ratio is absolutely incredible. But he's still got that movability that you would expect from a, from such a small aircraft. Yeah, indeed. And that comes from a highly modified pit special uh, airframe with the new wing that was designed by Eddie Sauronman, who's been a big part of Richard's muscle biplane and jet pits projects. Huge ailerons and a bigger wing area. They afford this incredible roll rate and also the astonishing low speed handling of this aeroplane, which we see demonstrated at different parts of this display. almost able to be able to stand it on its end. Oh, it, it can absolutely hover now. This is possibly the next best thing to having a Harrier or an F-35 in your air show.
and there's what we mean. Virtually completely stationary at the apex of that manoeuvre before tumbling back down through his own smoke. Now you say innovation on this. Has, has this been tried and done before? Is this is this a an, an, an add-on to uh, to pimping up your your biplane before? <laughs> uh, this is new to the UK and Europe. There have been jet augmented aerobatic aircraft of various types in the USA for quite some time. It's taken Rich quite a few years to get this past the relevant authorities here in the UK. But I'm very glad he has taken the time and effort to do so because this has been one of the absolute stars of the British Air Show circuit this year, especially on a glorious day such as this when he's got an enormous skyscape at his disposal to really show us what the jet pits can do. And Eddie Sauronman, who I mentioned earlier, who designed the wing for this aircraft, was heavily involved also in the jet additions to the airframe because he's been involved in the past in gaining approvals in the USA for aircraft like a jet-powered Waco biplane and the extraordinary Yak 110. the sort of slow speed handling I was talking about coming into play. And if you're wondering why we're not saying very much while that's going on, it's because we just want to listen to the jet engines and, and, the, and the turbo and, and just listening to the combination between the two of those and, and marvelling at that aircraft that is virtually hovering uh, as, it's, as it's flying right at the apex of, of its turn. It's, it's, it's true wonderment. It's almost breaking all the rules of, yes. of flying, isn't this it? This is what you can do with a power-to-weight ratio approaching one-to-one. -one. The airframe itself weighs 1,550 pounds. Of course, you need to add some fuel to that, so that's why the power-to-weight ratio approaches one-to-one -one for display purposes with the 1,700 pounds of thrust from the 8.5-litre Lycoming piston engine and those two linked jets. I'm guessing as the display goes on, the fuel gets lighter, the, 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 the plane gets more Precisely, lighter. yes. Again, I think we're being treated to an incredible, incredible air show with some absolute quality. Rich Goodwin has been on the display circuit for a good while now. He's a former Royal Air Force Tornado strike aircraft pilot. His late father, Ken Goodwin, was himself a display pilot of renown for many years in the RAF on the Hawker Hunter and the English Electric Lightning. But in neither of those was he able to do what his son's doing at the moment in this. I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the lightning there, the English Electric Lightning, because that was one of my favourite aircraft of all time. So noisy. Oh yes, like the Absolutely Phantom. Marvelous. That and the Phantom, my two favourites, I think, of that of that era. It's 
It's also got a fantastic smoke system, this aeroplane. And his smoke trail really hanging in the air today, Murray, because even up at altitude, unusually in recent years here at the Jersey International Air Display, it's not that windy. Yes, I, I, I don't know what's happened this year, but we're, we're very much welcoming it because it certainly shows the signs and you can keep that, uh, that smoke hanging in the air. It does fill the sky with that tracking. In future, Rich intends to run the two gas turbines on the pits on sustainable fuel and he's hoping to install a new water-cooled engine design which will give him even more power and make the display greener and it's all part of his involvement in STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths activities which he regularly supports at air shows with his pit specials. I've got a feeling that uh, Rich's workshop must be an absolute joy to walk around. Well, let's not forget, he built this at home. He did these modifications at home. That's the sort of skill level we are talking about. He's now bringing the aircraft back round for another look at it and another look at the aircraft's very attractive livery with the name of his sponsor, the Sabio Group, writ large, on the upper wing surfaces. We have to bear in mind that the endurance of the two jet engines is only about 15 minutes and he obviously needs to get back to the airport, which of course he can do without the aid of the two jets engaged. But now here's another of those fabulous knife edge passers. Give him a huge wave to show that you've enjoyed the display. Yes, time to give Rich a wave. He can see you. And he's going to be bringing it past us once again from left to right this time. Well, if you ever wonder what you can do with an 8-litre engine and a twin jetpack, that's, that's kind of what you can do. Very impressive. Well, I don't know about you, Murray, I think that is one of the most sensational individual aerobatic displays that we've ever seen at the Jersey International Air Display. Uh, it's, uh, absolutely fantastic. And, and uh, you know, as I said, it, bending all the rules of what you expect an aircraft to do by looking at it, don't judge a book by its cover, uh, that is truly, truly fantastic. And, uh, and our thanks to Rich, and uh, thank you uh, again, Ben, for filling us in on all the technicals on that. It's Liberation Radio. Uh, it is, uh, we're live in the afternoon on the avenue for the Jersey International Air Display, and yet to come, uh, the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. That's going to be coming in just three minutes' time.
It's Liberation Radio. Mel has been out and about, and she's been finding some model planes and Paul Bentley to talk to. Thank you very much indeed, Mel. Out on the avenue, she'll uh, catch up with you, no doubt, at some point and shove a microphone on your nose. In the meantime, uh, Diane and Kirsty and Laura. Diane, Kirsty and Laura, hello. Uh, sending love uh, to the radiology department of the Jersey General uh, from a hot and sunny display. There you go. Uh, also, Ethan Williams, hello. Uh, message to all. Uh, afternoon all. Enjoying fantastic coverage on Plains TV and Ben Dunnell's outstanding commentary over here on the south coast in the uk make sure you stay hydrated thank you ethan thank you very much indeed for your words uh, martin can i have a shout out to annette uh, we're on our honeymoon uh, love the french display we can't wait to see the red arrows we are loving jersey uh, mel says we're sitting on the uh, the green by la Fregette, watching the planes and enjoying the music marcus marie and sophie and also ricky uh, says, can you please give a shout out to PC Christine, who's walking up and down the avenue, even in all. Talking of uh, PC Christine, uh, Peter Sweeney, see what I did, uh, following the air show from a beach near Monaco. Yes, the French display team drew a crowd around me here in Monaco listening to the show. That's the kind of stuff that we want to hear. And uh, Dowie Prinslow. Uh, message uh, w um, watching you from uh, guys in uh, Pretoria South Africa on Plains TV thanks for the broadcast love the show Phil Highdale uh, ex-resident listening in Blackpool and watching the live stream on the web so plenty going on and we are just a minute away from the Battle of Britain memorial flight let's get ourselves in the mood for that And coming in from the waterfront, it's the Lancaster, it's the Hurricane, it's the Spitfire, it's the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight.
Well, Ben, uh, I've got to say that this is always the emotional part. It's always the, the part that, for, for so many reasons, for so many people, this means something, I mean, even me personally, and it's, it's always the emotional part of it. So uh, let's just take us through these, uh, these aircraft as they peel off into their individual displays. What should we seeing first? Well, the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight display can take various forms. Murray, you can often have uh, singleton fighters or maybe a, a fighter tail chase, and then, of course, the Lancaster as a singleton. And today we are very privileged indeed to have as part of the display the only airworthy Spitfire at present that actually flew during the Battle of Britain in the summer of 1940. But there, the Hurricane flying past us first but looking out further to the right in comes the only airworthy example in Europe of that most outstanding four-engined heavy bomber of the Second World War in terms of RAF Bomber Command Service the Avro Lancaster such a tremendous sound um, and such an evocative sound for all of them um, let's turn let's turn to um, I, I, there was a question that I'm meaning to ask you and there's the Spitfire high up in the sky to our right just coming in from first tower and bringing its way low now that was that's tr a traditional move for what would have been uh, in the Battle of Britain a Spitfire which of course is to be up high where it could get altitude above most other aircraft of that time and that was one of its big USPs wasn't it uh, yes, it's a classic uh, tactic in aerial combat to try and gain height on one's opponent and the Spitfire in terms of the two of the single seat fighters of RAF Fighter Command during the Battle of Britain, this and the Hurricane had the edge when it came to out and out manoeuvrability mm. but it was as we shall reflect the Hurricane that did the brunt of the damage against the Luftwaffe during the summer of 1940 but this Spitfire 2A as I say an actual veteran of the battle. I've always tried to work out the, the differences between a Hurricane and a, and a Spitfire and it's a bit unfair to compare the two. Um, uh, the, the Spitfire was more manoeuvrable for certain. The Spitfire had the, uh, the rounded cockpit if I'm right in saying and the, the Hurricane had the more rectangular cockpit generally but there were about 20 odd versions of a Spitfire. It went through in uh, terms of marks to Mark 24 by which time the aircraft was significantly heavier and more powerful and of course also used the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine right. as opposed to, to the Merlin. Merlin but of course the classic elliptical wing shape of the Spitfire perhaps its most distinguishing feature. Just putting aside the emotion and looking at the technical of the Spitfire what made it so good? In many ways it was the airframe design which had been started by a team led by RJ Mitchell, Reginald Joseph Mitchell, chief designer at Supermarine, a man who was never destined to live to see his aircraft's greatest achievements during the Second World War. He had died from cancer before World War II broke out. Um, Joe Smith and colleagues at Supermarine then continued his work through mark after mark an outstanding airframe, an outstanding engine, the Rolls-Royce Merlin, as also used on the Hurricane, a design that suffered its teething troubles early on, but of course became a supremely adaptable and supremely capable fighting aeroplane. This one was just the 14th of the nearly 11,940 Spitfires that were produced at the famed Castle Bromwich Shadow Factory of the Vickers Supermarine Company in Birmingham. And it was shot at by a German Messerschmitt Bf 109 during the Battle of Britain, in fact on the 25th of October 1940, while in the hands of a Polish pilot by the name of Ludwig Martel. And indeed, whenever we watch the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight flying, we recall the fact that it was not just British pilots who flew in the Battle of Britain and the other significant actions of the Second World War. Pilots from very many countries did so, and the Poles, one of those nations that made an outstanding contribution.
The Spitfire was damaged on that occasion, but it managed to force land in a field near Hastings and was able to fly again on the front line. Well, it, is, uh, it's, it, it brings up so much emotion and so much story, Ben, uh, of, of the endeavour and the bravery of those days. And I think that's part of why it's the memorial flight, why it's called what it is. And of course, where the, uh, the, where the, uh, the people that build the aircraft were uh, uh, in Castle Bromwich, uh, a lot of those then went on to be the ground crew uh, patching them back up much later once they were built because they were the experts who had put them together in the first place. And, and I, I speak from personal history of there that one of the mechanics that was in the building at Ca Castle Bromwich was then in Biggin Hill uh, was my grandfather. So uh, that story has been relayed to me and, and the connection between the two is never lost. Uh, of those that, uh, that, that got there with the spanners out and put them together. This aircraft is painted as a Spitfire Mark I of number 54 Squadron, flown by one of the famous New Zealanders who took part in the Battle of Britain and subsequent actions, Al Deer, one of whose nephews, incidentally, living in New Zealand, is now himself an airworthy Spitfire owner. Mm. But its place now taken by the Hurricane 2C. And having said that that Spitfire was one of the very first to be built by the Castle Bromwich Shadow Factory, this was the last Hurricane ever built by the Hawker Factory at Langley in Buckinghamshire in July 1944, and it has forever since been known as the last of the many. flight regularly changes the colour schemes on its aircraft, particularly when they undergo major servicing and overhauls. And it's a particularly interesting scheme on this Hurricane at present because it represents the Hurricane's use as a night fighter. It's in the markings of a number 247 squadron aeroplane. as was used to provide air defence by night of the areas around Plymouth and Exeter, and also for night intruder operations against targets in northwestern France. This as the RAF began to go on the offensive following the successful actions of the summer of 1940. Just a question in terms of point of difference, Ben. Uh, were the Hurricane and the Spitfire, did they have different uses? Were they sent up at different times, or was it a case of whatever's available, get it in the air? Well, very often, um, large formations of RAF Fighter Command aeroplanes would include both Hurricanes and Spitfires from different units that were stationed in the particular regions from which aircraft were being sent up to meet German raids. However, it does have to be stressed that there was something of a division of responsibilities during the Battle of Britain because the Hurricane, that little bit less manoeuvrable but a very stable gun platform, would often be sent after the slower German bombers and the twin-engined Messerschmitt DF-110 fighters, while the Hurricanes, well, the Spitfires rather, would more often go after the single-seat Messerschmitt DF-109s. I suspect as uh, battles went on, people learnt uh, which, which ones would be the, uh, the aircraft for them. Uh, incoming uh, from uh, First Tower is the Lancaster.
7,377 examples of Avro's famous four-engine heavy, the Lancaster, were produced. Today, only two remain in airworthy condition. If you were here back in 2014, you will have seen the other, that owned by the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum, but this, the only one left flying in Europe, the pride of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. Well, the Dam Busters march as the Lancaster exits stage right towards the airport. Uh, we'll come to you in just a second, Ben. Before that, uh, His Excellency the Lieutenant Governor has joined me alongside. Uh, sir, um, I, I, you're seeing this and, and, and your thoughts on this display and, and, and this day in Jersey. Wonderful. Uh, what a wonderful display so far by so many amazing aviators. And I can't just say that last 
passed by the Lancasters is reminding us all about uh, what it takes sometimes to maintain our freedom and how much we owe uh, to the aviators of the Second World War flying those amazing aircraft. Fantastic. But yeah, super day, beautiful weather. It's wonderful to see so many people from Jersey and visitors to the island out here today watching this amazing display. Well done to Mike Higgins and the entire team here. What a wonderful, I hope everyone's enjoying themselves. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us up here today and, and thanks for being around in the crowd today. I know everyone's pleased to see you, so welcome along. Thanks, Murray. Thank you very much. His Excellency, the Lieutenant Governor of Jersey, joining us uh, live down here. Uh, ben, just a, just a quick uh, quick mention on that, on that memorial flight, which has been absolutely tremendous. It has, and very appropriate that we should play the Dam Busters March at the end there, Murray, because, of course, this year has marked the 80th anniversary of Operation Chastise, as it was known, the Ruhr Dam's raid by the Lancasters of Number 617 Squadron on the night of the 16th and 17th of May, 1943. Nineteen specially adapted Lancasters of that unit led by Wing Commander Guy Gibson were sent out to bomb the Ruhr dams. Of them, 11 made it through to do so on an immensely hazardous operation. Eight aircraft were lost and fully 53 of the 133 aircrew who went on that famous raid lost their lives. Nonetheless, it went down in Royal Air Force history and it's no wonder we recall it eight decades on. Ben, thank you so much for that, that, that really important reminder of what that means. Thank you so much. Um, we are minutes away from uh, the RAF Falcons. We're getting rather excited about that. That's coming up in, uh, in just a minute or so. And uh, very shortly, uh, we will be going over. Uh, in fact, I think we can do that right now, can't we? We can go over right now. Flight Lieutenant Jennifer Litter, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I am your commentator for the Royal Air Force Falcons Parachute Display Team. I'll be talking you through our fantastic display for 2023, hopefully getting your eyes and cameras pointed in the right direction so you get to enjoy every single moment of it. Weather and air traffic control permitting, the Royal Air Force Falcons hope to provide an exciting display for you today demonstrating the RAF's parachuting capability, often jumping into a range of environments with limited space and sometimes at very short notice. We conduct displays from a minimum of 2,500 feet above the ground and up to a maximum of 7,000 feet. Today, the weather conditions are perfect for parachuting, so we therefore hope to perform a high show where the team will exit the aircraft from 7,000 feet and be under canopy for 5,000 feet. If you're taking any photos or videos today, please share them online via our social media channels using the hashtag RAF Falcons or at us on our Instagram, Facebook or Twitter pages. We would love to see and share your pictures. You may have noticed some of the team are already on the ground. This is our drop zone or DZ team or setting up as we speak. The drop zone safety officer today is Warrant Officer Paul Floyd with the survival equipment technicians assisting Corporal Dan Edwards and Gav Wright. The drop zone safety officer has just given the two minute call. This means that the ground, the area is safe for the team to land and the airspace is clear. The team coach, Flight Sergeant Lyons, will be looking out of the door of the aircraft and waiting for the right time to signal to the team for them to jump. If you look up, you may see the aircraft running in.
So if you're, you take your eyes up to the sky, you can see that red smoke. That's the smoke from the coach's leg trailing at the back of the aircraft. And we are looking for eight canopies. And they're out, the 2023 Royal Air Force Falcons parachute display team. You can see the red smoke trailing from their legs, created by the smoke canisters attached to the boots. For the 2023, the team have been working on a dynamic routine over the winter months, and we hope you enjoy the display. They are beginning to build our snake formation, one parachute behind the other, turning 180 degrees back up the jump run. The coach has just made the call for the heart. The parachutes turn their canopies in the opposite direction to the person in front. This puts them into a controlled turn, giving an effective visual pattern. Today, the heart shape is dedicated to everybody from Jersey that's come out to watch the display. The team are now performing the crisscross. Both sides of the formation turn 90 degrees towards each other with closing speeds of over 40 knots. They immediately make a turn into our favorite maneuver, the carousel. This requires vast amounts of concentration and trust in one another. And the team coach leads the Falcons into the final formation, the Sabre Chase. You will see the team forming a snake, but this time with dynamic left and right turns to position themselves for the landing pattern into the arena. Okay, everybody, as the parachutists approach the DZ, they will be able to hear you. So please put your hands together and give them a huge cheer and show your appreciation for the skills demonstrated today by the Royal Air Force Falcons.
Landing first, we have Flight Sergeant Liam Lyons. Sergeant Paddy Gilwar, Sergeant Andrew Lynch, Sergeant Gabe Coleman Moffat, Flight Lieutenant Reeve, Sergeant McCall, and finally Sergeant Finch carrying the ensign and Sergeant Ashelby with the Union Jack. The team will now pack up their kit and prepare for the lineup. The drop zone safety officer has given the signal. The team are running in. Please put your hands together for the 2023 Royal Air Force Falcons Parachute Display Team. Our thanks to the RFA Falcons. This is the 2023 Jersey International Air Display. This is Liberation Radio Live. Well, there's plenty of dedications coming in. I'm just going to try and get through a few of them if we can. Thank you very much for everyone getting in touch with Liberation Radio. Uh, you can do so on the website, liberationradio.co.uk, uh, or you can just download the app, and on the app there you can contact us, uh, and the app can be found in your app store under Liberation Radio. Connor Hoops uh, has a message. The air display, I'm at the, at the moment, like a shout-out from my wife, Tammy, who's enjoying a dessert break from nursing school. Uh, donate to keep the air show alive, please. Yes, the QR codes. Please do donate on the QR codes that you'll see dotted around or go to ports of jersey where you can donate to the air show for future air shows so we can keep this event alive uh vicky vass says uh, hi guys hope you're having fun at the air display please can you do a shout out to the guys from les Amis? uh we can do that les Amis, hello i used to uh, get this i used to get uh, to support uh, they are awesome people lots of love from vicky uh, Fra Fraser Markin, Martin, my mate Frazzle. Uh, hello, Fraz. Uh, he says, hi, Muggs. Any chance of you uh, giving a, uh, a, a shout-out on the air display? A shout-out to my son, Alex, and the grandchildren, Abby and Dylan. Love from Frazzle. Love back to you. Uh, also, uh, what else have I got down here? Robert Elliott. Uh, I'm watching on Plains TV all the way from Sunny Blackpool uh, from Robert Elliott. Uh, what a great show. Look forward to seeing the Red Arrows. Kirsty Mosley says, can we have a shout-out for Harry DeGrushi? 
Harry DeGrushy Wilson and his friend Eddie, Ella and William. They're watching the show from West Park Apartments. They wanted to say thank you for an amazing air display. Well, thank you for watching and thank you probably for doing your uh, donating as well. It's been very, very good of you all to get in touch. Please do get in touch with us here on Liberation Radio.
Uh, it's Bon Jovi in the afternoon. On a Thursday afternoon, it's Liberation Radio live on the avenue and live in Jersey, live in Guernsey and live where everyone else is listening. And we've got people listening in Monaco. We've got people listening in South Africa. We've got people listening in Australia. We've got people listening in France. Um, this air display is being listened to in quite a few places on Liberation Radio and including in Jersey as well and if you're in Jersey at the moment hello and thank you very much indeed for getting in touch we've had lots of people uh, getting in touch with us uh, telling us how much they're enjoying it and if you want to get in touch it's quite easy all you've got to do is uh, give us a shout uh, and uh, once again Nick and Jules uh, drink the tea eat the egg sandwiches on on you're certainly not scared and uh, also uh, can we say hi to Hattie Erin Chloe Harrison Summer Frederica and the rest of the Hill mob. Uh, excellent, good. Carry on enjoying the afternoon. Carry on there. It's Liberation Radio. Ben Donnell is alongside our show commentator. Ben, uh, looking forward to uh, what we have to come because there's still plenty of excitement, including the Catalina, which is next. Yeah, Catalina next, Murray. Then we've got the Bronco from Montelimar in France and then the Draken from the Swedish Air Force historic flight. So three fantastic, contrasting historic aeroplanes. And then, of course, how else to finish the show but with the Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrow onslaught at 25 past four. Plenty to look forward to. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, things to mention, don't forget to donate. If you wish to donate, there is a QR code you can donate at. Go online from the QR code or go onto the Ports uh, Jersey, Jersey uh, International Air Display, J-I-A-D, uh, and then you'll find there a donation page. Please do donate if you can, because it keeps future air displays alive. I like this, uh, actually deliberately, by the, just... Well, here we are down on the avenue and just enjoying ourselves in the sunshine. Liberation Radio, whatever you're up to this afternoon, please stay safe. Make sure you've got plenty of uh, sun cream and protection with you. Make sure you're hydrated. Please don't leave any rubbish anywhere. If you see anyone leaving rubbish, just do uh, gently remind them not to leave it. We don't want too many seagulls around. It's not good for an air display. And not only that, it's not good for the environment. Please do take your rubbish home. We'd like to make sure that when we do an air display, that we're not inconveniencing other people and causing even more work. And I'm sure you feel the same way about it as well excellent that's just the wrappers from my sandwiches there which i'm making sure i put into the bag good i that was timely wasn't it ben it was rather yes 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 it's almost as if we know what we're doing yes um, uh, <laughs> don't, now... don't, don't be fooled by that <laughs> uh, we all ought to say a huge thank you to all of you who are attending this show today wherever you're watching it from here in jersey you have already been a fantastic audience i'm sure you'll continue to be so for the rest of the day because we've got some of the highlights of the show coming up over the next hour and a half or so but we really do appreciate your support in this of all years particularly given what we've been describing about the funding situation for this show it's so gratifying to see you all enjoying this event so much it's huge numbers out there. I mean, we're, we're facing out towards the sea, just, just so people can picture where we are. We're right close to the seawall, yep. uh, pretty much midway into the bay. We're the midway line. In fact, we're, we're, we're the line that they take for, for the aircraft coming in as a centre line. In fact, that's been moved slightly to oh, our it, right this, this year. Right yes, this year? Okay. yes, it has. But uh, it's still a very noticeable central point in the display arena. Right, so we're facing out towards uh, Elizabeth Castle, facing out towards the sea, and right behind us, of course, is the lower park, and there's lots going on there, and uh, at the lower park, that's where uh, most people are seated, having a, a bit of an ice cream. Stuart, the ice cream man, I promised I mentioned Stuart, he's such a great guy, he's a legend in Jersey, so Stuart, the ice cream man, a hello to you, I'll be along for an ice cream if you've got any left towards the end of the day. Uh, best not to have one now, I'm just going to make a mess on those. You've got people listening all over the place as well, I, I, I was just mentioning earlier that people are are, are, are texting us constantly going I'm listening da 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 everywhere so indeed so yes and of course people are watching literally around the world we know that on Plains TV huge thanks to Adrian and the team from Plains TV for coming out here again mm. they've got a very busy period of air displays over the next few days 
very grateful indeed for their support and of course you can watch this back on their YouTube channel and watch their back catalogue of air displays from the past by signing up as a member on www.planestv.com great to have them here as ever alright well the Catalina is on the way very very shortly we'll be back with that but before all of that let's have another tune you can have a dance to shall we let's, let's, let's go with a song Ryan Ferry, Roxy Music, Liberation Radio, live on the avenue. It's Murray Norton with you. Hello, good afternoon to you. Welcome along to the programme. If you're listening to us on the flotilla out on the boats, I hope you're enjoying yourself. If you're on the West Park area and if you're on the waterfront, you'll notice the Catalina coming overhead and heading in from the Radisson direction in towards first hour so that's where it's heading right now uh, ben the catalina uh, is, uh, is is such a graceful old bird really i think that's the best way i can describe it yeah we love seeing it in jersey and so appropriate in this maritime environment of course this is very much one of the many historical predecessors to the poseidon that we saw at the start of the flying program right. today it undertakes you know, undertook many of the same roles as are conducted today by the Poseidon. This is the consolidated PBY-5A Catalina, which comes to us from Plain Sailing Air Displays at Duxford in Cambridgeshire. Graceful sense of calmness. Very much so, but this was a very warlike machine that was developed to meet a US Navy requirement in the mid-1930s because even then there were worries about potential Japanese threats in the Pacific theatre and the US Navy was after a new long-range patrol bomber to counter those. At that stage it was a pure flying boat. 
This is an amphibian model, hence the fact, of course, that it's able to take off and land from the hard runway at the airport. Right from the start, it was incredibly long-ranged. On the maiden flight of the patrol bomber version of the design, it achieved a new outright world distance record, and that was really a portent of the sort of activities that Catalinas would go on to perform in all major theatres of World War II. Of course, by today's... Um ratios of speed it does look particularly slow and you know almost like a, a, a giant target sitting in the sky but of, of the time it was it was very much ahead of its time there's no doubt this was an aircraft that was vulnerable to uh, enemy fighters for exactly right. that reason but it was a very advanced design in many ways it is extremely elegant you might think that that looks like quite a big barn door of a wing in fact, it's what's known as a wet wing, which means it's got fuel tankage within it. And that is important for streamlining the design. It leads to an overall weight saving. It cleans up the lines of the rest of the airframe, meaning it's got low drag. And also, the wingtip floats are retractable. In fact, we won't see them deployed during the display today, but they are able to be deployed. And that further cuts the drag. It aids the range, it aids the overall performance. So, yes, this was very much ahead of its time, certainly for the mid-1930s, and it was effective right the way through World War II in both Europe and the Pacific. Now, in terms of uh, its, uh, its scarcity... Are there many Catalinas around? Are there, you know, are there, there can't be many of these left. Well, there are quite a few in the United States and in Australasia. This, amazingly now, is the only one left flying in Europe. There was one in France and there was one in the Netherlands, which were both airworthy. They have both been sold to new owners elsewhere. So this is now the only one flying on European shores. In terms of capacity, what's it got inside it? Is there, is there much inside? Is there much space in there? Well, this aircraft's interior has actually been modified for civilian use over the years, so it's not representative inside this particular example, that is, of a wartime Catalina. But the sort of payload that would be carried at war would be about 4,000 or so pounds of bombs, depth charges and or torpedoes, and it would be fitted with five machine guns. Three of them in a nose turret, which this aircraft, again, doesn't have, and two in the blisters. And this aircraft does have fuselage side blisters, albeit slightly oversized compared with those which would have had the guns in during wartime. This aeroplane is actually owned by a group of shareholders, some of whom are pilots, some of whom aren't, Today's pilot is one of that ownership group. His name is John Harmsworth, and this is a very, very special display for him indeed, because he was born and brought up and learned to fly here in Jersey. Oh, well, that, that, that's going to mean a great deal to him. That's fantastic. He learned to fly at Jersey Aero Club. His father, who was also named John Harmsworth, and his uncle, called Bill Stewart, were both wartime pilots who flew for Jersey Airlines. John's dad, John Sr., went on to fly for Orini. Uncle Bill started Intra Airways. Some of you here may remember that carrier. And he gave John, who's flying the Catalina here for us, his first airline job on the Douglas DC-3. John later went on to an illustrious career in the airlines, finishing up retiring as a Boeing 747 captain for Cathay Pacific, but he found he missed flying so much he decided to become one of the Catalina shareholders. Coming in from the west and banking its way around the bay, as the tide comes in, I've noticed, by the way, so uh, a little bit of uh, the, the sea coming in towards us, so we're in for a grandstand finale. We are, and it's absolutely gorgeous to see it against the shimmering water. A real touch of the Mediterranean about this arena on an afternoon like this. So, when you when you say amphibious, I mean this this could land on water. Oh, it it uh, could and regularly does. Plain sailing undertake regular water training at Biscarros in France, mm -hmm. and they have undertaken water landings for display purposes as well. So, yes, it's very much within this aircraft's capabilities to this day. John Harmsworth 
brought the Catalina to Jersey for the first time since he started flying it last summer. And he made an 18-minute flight around the island in what he says was the best weather he'd seen in a long time. I wonder if today is even surpassing that. I, th- I think with the crowds down here uh, along, yeah. the, along the south coast, that's, that's definitely going to top that. Um, and particularly it's display day. Why would it not be the, the, the best day possible? Catalina making its way out over Elizabeth Castle as we speak. Elizabeth Castle, of course, closed today as it is for each and every air show. And uh, as, because that is right on the flight route. And uh, you'll notice the, uh, the aircraft at the height they're at and at the distance they're at. They have set parameters of where they can and cannot fly. And uh, so not having the public in uh, Elizabeth Castle at this time uh, is uh, a very important thing. That said, right over that flotilla that we see right out in the bay of those people on the boats with, uh, with absolutely grandstand views. We're talking about this aircraft's wartime history, Murray. The Catalinas of RAF Coastal Command were crucial assets in terms of closing what was known as the Mid-Atlantic Gap, the area of the Atlantic in which German U-boats found themselves able to roam almost at will, supported by the very potent Focke-Wulf Condor maritime strike aircraft, out of range of existing Allied land-based aircraft, and all the while posing a huge threat to the crucial Allied supply convoys across the North Atlantic, which were, of course, absolutely key in keeping Britain supplied with all sorts of materials Mm. and foodstuffs. And the Catalina was one of the aeroplanes whose entry into RAF Coastal Command service helped solve that problem. Another was a land-based aircraft, another consolidator product indeed, the B-24 Liberator. Now, I know there have been uh, quite a few people, uh, particularly, and here's an incentive if you want to be a sponsor of the air show. Ah, yes. Some of, the, some, of the, some of the sponsors yesterday got a trip up in the Catalina as part of their sponsorship. So, you know, if you want to be a sponsor for the air show, there are some great rewards to be had for you and your team. Get, become a sponsor and talk to them about getting a flight in one of these great aircraft. There's, uh, there's, there's something for a future, uh, a, a future thought for you, for a future air display. And if you're thinking what a great display today is and you've got a couple of pounds that you'd like to make sure goes to a really, really good cause, then a future air display can probably be about the best that you can be right today because you'd want another day like today. So uh, you'll see some QR codes dotted around on, on, on posters uh, which are for donations uh, to the Jersey uh, International Air Display and you can do that and uh, make sure you put the reference in J-I-A-D when you fill in the form and make sure you, uh, you can... Uh, Make sure you have the credit card holder's permission to do so. But please, please do make your donations. It would be uh, very, very worthwhile for you to do so. Catalina coming round for another graceful uh, pass. In fact, the last pass of its display before heading back to the airport. So as it curves around St. Obin's Bay, please show your appreciation to John Harmsworth, a Jerseyman, and his crew aboard the consolidated PBY-5A Catalina. Uh, thanks indeed uh, to John and indeed the Catalina and their entire crew as well. Uh, listening uh, to dulcet tones of me, moi, really, uh, Fiona, Fifi, uh, Fifi McLaren, thank you very much indeed for listening to us. Uh, Lucy, Lucy O'Sullivan, well done. Loving the air display, love listening. Thank you very much indeed, Lucy. Uh, and thank you to everyone else who's been in touch as well. It's always nice to have uh, uh, lots and lots of people we've got uh, down here. Uh, 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 and from Fiona, actually, a shout out to Mark Corradine on his 50th birthday. He's watching the air display outside Frigate. Happy birthday from all friends and family. Excellent. Happy birthday to you, uh, Mark. Uh, say hello to Peter Le Bousselier, who's uh, really looking forward to the Red Arrows. Just don't mention my name. Just say from the pilot. It's from the pilot. Uh, Simon uh, Watchhorn. Uh, he's been in touch, said not able to be there to watch the air display in person. They should be watching the excellent coverage from the very nice people at Plains TV uh, over the channel in the West Midlands. All right there. Uh, say hello to my father, uh, Mick, who's also watching online. Love to any, uh, to any of my family in Jersey who may be listening. Thank you, Simon. To all of it. He sent that message at least three times. And Haley says, uh, say hello to Peter Labustier, who's looking forward to the Red Arrows. I've said your name now. There we go. It's Liberation Radio.
Well, if ever an island was walking on sunshine, it's certainly today. Katrina and the Waves on Liberation Radio. It's Murray on the afternoon. Uh, for a change for me, normally in the morning, but yes, I'm normally, uh, what am I, 6 till 10 in the morning tomorrow morning? You can join me live on Liberation Radio tomorrow. You'll be live anyway. I'll probably be half asleep. Uh, so that's tomorrow on Liberation Radio and each and every morning on The Breakfast Show. Uh, find us, get the app, download it and listen to Liberation Radio. That's what you want to do. And here comes our next display item straight into us. One of the greatest supporters of the Jersey International Air Display, this is the North American OV-10B Bronco. Sort of snuck up on us then. Yes, now when Mike Higgins took over the organisation of this display back in 1997, one of the very first operators he got in touch with was the Musée Européen de l'Aviation de Chasse at Montélimar in France, asking them to bring their Bronco to Jersey. And it's been back pretty much every single show since. And it's not hard to see why, is it, Murray? It's a great act, this. Well, it's it's manoeuvrable. It looks different from everything else. Exactly. Uh, and and you do you know stand to that and go, why does it look like that? Yes. What's, what's, <laughs> it, what's it designed for? What do they use it for? Everything. Yeah. Well, Everything. The biggest utility Pretty vehicle much. going. There, there. Yes. It's the SUV of the skies. Precisely. This dated from the 1960s when the three main U.S. armed services, the Air Force, the Navy and the Army, the Navy incorporating the Marine Corps, wanted what they called a light armed reconnaissance aircraft. And the requirement for that rather dictated that it was going to be quite an unusual machine. It had to have two crew. It had to be able to fly off an aircraft carrier, have a top speed of 350 miles an hour, carry 2,400 pounds of cargo or up to six paratroopers or stretchers, and to be able to withstand loads between plus eight and minus three G. So it had to be a very adaptable, very strong, very agile and powerful aircraft. North American won that contest, and this is the rather unlikely looking result. It's almost like I'd, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall when they, they set down the specification of what they wanted. And so, so you basically want everything, don't you? Yes, there were very few roles that didn't perform. Air-to-air -air combat is uh, one of them. But it would have been a pretty good dogfighter in a close-in fight, this. It's got a fantastic rate of roll and turn. Was this uh, used in, in any theatre of, of, of war? Oh yes, Vietnam and right. the Gulf. Yeah. By the time of the Gulf War in 1991, it was a little bit obsolete. But this was one of the key aerial weapons the US military had at its disposal in Vietnam. And this one's actually been repainted recently. It did used to appear in the colours of the West German Luftwaffe, which operated it as a target tug, but it's since been put into this desert camouflage scheme of a Bronco flown by the US Marine Corps in Operation Desert Storm in the Gulf in 1991. I, I don't suppose I really should be surprised, but I, but I am surprised that it was, it was still being used in 1991. Its longevity is incredible. Yeah, the US Air Force decided not to take its Broncos, mm. which it had used in Vietnam, to the Gulf because it was felt the aircraft was becoming too vulnerable to enemy attentions. The Marines did so, and they still performed very well in that theatre. One of the key features of the Bronco is as we, one of them is also the fact that it's fully aerobatic, as we're seeing, but another of them is that twin boom layout. And you can see the rear end of the fuselage tapers off, and that can be used for a large glazed dome, but it can also be used for paratroop doors. In fact, this Bronco is capable of dropping parachutes, so I've seen it do that at a French air show earlier this year. Surely not out through that back door. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. 
in Vietnam, they performed observation and forward air control duties. They direct strikes by fast jet attack aircraft like the F-4 Phantom and so forth, by the AC-47 uh, gunships, um, by ground artillery and much more. They provided post-strike damage assessment and they escorted the C-123 provider transports that were engaged in the very controversial Operation Ranch and defoliation missions. It's been a busy little boy, basically, this aircraft, hasn't it? It certainly has. Marine Corps Broncos dropped paratroops in Vietnam as well. And it's almost a staple of the Jersey Air Display now. I, I think I've, I can't remember how many times I've seen it here, but it's it's certainly been around a few. Oh yes, as I said, almost since the since the start of it becoming international in the late nineties. Nowadays, term a light attack aircraft, and light attack aircraft are very much in vogue in theatres such as Afghanistan and so forth. Aircraft like the uh, Beechcraft 86 Wolverine and the Embraer Super Ticano. And in fact, the Bronco, which is now coming in for its last pass, was considered for resurrection as a potential contender for a US military requirement in Afghanistan. Tilting the wings left and right, and it's, uh, that's their way of waving goodbye. So give them a good wave on the way out there. I know they'll appreciate that. The French pilot there will be uh, very warmly appreciating your waves back. Indeed, and that was Jean-Luc Berry flying the Bronco from the Musée Européen de l'Aviation de Chasse at Montélimar. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed there. i um, going to say hello to Lyndon. I know my mate Lyndon is listening today. He said, can you please, please, please give a shout out to my grandson, Joey, who's watching his first ever air display. So, Joey, welcome to your first ever air display. There's plenty more of those to come. And uh, thank you again for all your kind words. Get in touch with us, liberationradio.co.uk or on the app. Contact us. Let us know where you're listening and we'll give you a shout out. Let me let me help you. Let me help you. We're coming coming to we're coming we're coming to the Draken very shortly. We've got a few minutes before that. Uh, we have yes. We've got about uh, five or six minutes unless it's brought in a little early. Thank heavens for that. Thank you for rescuing me, Ben. There, just for a minute. I'll come back to you in just a second. Before we do anything else, I know that Mel's out there somewhere meeting people. Just a little message that came in. Thank you very much indeed, Mel. We got to you in the end. She's out there. The excitement's building. Red arrows are on the way. Before that, the uh, Saab J35 Draken, which is just around the corner. Ben will be along to tell you more about that in a moment. Let's have a tune first.
Uh, it's Liberation Radio. It's Murray with you in the afternoon in glorious sunshine right here on the south coast of Jersey, the Jersey International Air Display. Ben, just arriving in now, there's a roar. Yes, it's from the Swedish Air Force historic flight. <laughs> Absolutely stunning Saab J35J Draken. That is just such an awesome sight, isn't it? It is an absolutely incredible aeroplane. We were talking about the demanding requirements that led to the design of the Bronco. Well, this had to be an all weather aircraft capable of very high speeds and with an exceptional rate of climb, yet still able to operate from short runways at dispersed sites such as roads. And this is what Saab came up with. Looks like it's got phenomenal power for starters. Let's just talk about that power. It has 10,600 pounds of thrust, what's known as dry, so without reheat. 15,000 pounds of thrust with reheat engaged on the Volvo Flugmotor RM6B turbojet engine. And what's key to the Draken's design is the double delta wing configuration with the inboard and outboard delta wing sections of a different thickness. And right from the start, this aircraft demonstrated incredible performance. Look, I know it's exciting and I know it's really fast and here it comes again. as you can possibly, if you can look at it, it's so high up right now. Uh, and uh, do make sure you take care with your eyes in the sun. Here it comes again. Well, I certainly rattled a few windows along the Radisson. And you've got that characteristically long afterburner flame visible out of the back as well. This is an aircraft that first started entering Swedish Air Force service in 1959. And in terms of its performance, it was a steep learning curve for its pilots to get used to, not least because when it first entered service, there was no two-seat trainer version of the Draken. That only came along later. of different Swedish Air Force, or former Swedish Air Force types, right up to the AJS-37 Viggen, which only was retired from Swedish Air Force service in the mid-2000s. Well, I've seen the Viggen here before, but it's great to see the Draken back, that's for certain. Yes, this is the single-seat J35J model, and since this aircraft was last here, it's been repainted in this very pleasant camouflage scheme with the markings of F-10 wing of the Swedish Air Force at Engelholm. This is the first time we've seen it here in these colours. The concept with the Draken in the Swedish Air Force as an interceptor was that it could take off, climb very quickly to high altitude and intercept enemy bombers. That would have been a typical mission for this aeroplane. redolent of its era, isn't it? A sort of space-age fighter. So what years are we putting on this uh, this aircraft? Yeah, they, forgive me, I've already mentioned it. Well, the Draken first flew in prototype form in 1955. This particular one dates from 1969, and it was later upgraded to this J35J standard, which was the last of the 
single seat models in Swedish Air Force service. Some other interesting facts about this aircraft operation because the Swedes operated their frontline jets like pretty much no other country. You could refuel and rearm a Draken in only three to four minutes between missions, and that was whether or not they were operating from their home base. And at several of those home bases, they had concealed hangarage in underground cavern shelters, or whether they were flying in the field from forward bases or even those road strips. The idea being that the frontline aircraft would be left unexposed to enemy attack until the last possible moment before they were scrambled into action. Wow. Here it comes. Here it goes. That was as quick as you could say. Um, this has got some speed on it. The last Swedish Air Force Drakens were retired in 1998. It was only flown by three other countries, Denmark, Finland and Austria, and the last of those was the Austrian Air Force, which didn't retire its Drakens until December 2005. That, as you might have gathered, was its final pass, Lars Martinsson, with the J-35J Draken from the Swedish Air Force Historic Flight. Again, tremendous supporters of the Jersey International Air Display. Thank you very much indeed, Ben. Some people to say hello to. Craig's been in touch. Can we give a shout-out to all the Jersey Weather Chat members enjoying the amazing air display? Laura Walters, uh, Laura Waters, should I say, uh, has been saying, can you shout-out to Laura, Amy, Josh, Keith, Mary... Dave, Jan, watching the air show from our amazing balcony. Um, and uh, Fraser has been in touch. Can't find you on the avenue, but it's my wife's birthday today. So can you mention my wife's birthday? Yes, I can mention your wife's birthday, Fraser. Um, if only you talk... Oh, yeah, Fiona. Fiona Gilroy. Happy birthday, Fiona. Jennifer Bisson, uh, can you say happy birthday to Archie Bisson, who's watching the air display today from the lay-by? Uh, Andrew and Susan, uh, watching the air display from Muskoka Lakes in Canada whilst working. That's a heck of a view from there. But anyway, Andrew and Susan, they're watching on plain TV. Uh, watching the air display from Canada. Uh, we've got uh, a shout out to Harriet and her first air show. She's sat drawing uh, planes in Victoria Avenue, waiting for the Red Arrows. Don't wait too long. They're coming very shortly. Sandra Bishop in a village called uh, Nogsall in Stafford. Nogsall in Stafford, really? Um, <laughs> Hello, uh, can you put a message out to Monique and Patrick who are in Jersey at the air show from Belgium, wish them a lovely time, and Bob Franklin, whose mate is also over here at the show. Well, that's quite a few of you, that's for certain, isn't it? It's Liberation Radio.
Red Arrows on the way very, very shortly. We'll be talking to squadron leader uh, uh, Graham Muscat very, very shortly as well. That's all coming up right here on Liberation Radio and the Jersey International Air Display. Liberation Radio's live coverage of the Jersey International Air Display. Murray Norton with you right the way through. I'm on breakfast tomorrow from 6 till 10. Do join me then. Uh, before all of that, let's find out as we warm up and get ready for the grand finale of this display. Of course, it is the Red Arrows. And let's go over to squadron leader Graham Muscat. Graham. Good afternoon, Jersey. I am squadron leader Graham Muscat. I am Red 10, the team supervisor with the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team. It's the Red Arrows. It's great to be back here at Jersey. We displayed earlier over at Guernsey in this wonderful weather. And today, this afternoon, we've got great weather for hopefully a fantastic display here at Jersey. My role as a team supervisor is to ensure that the team adhere to the rules and regulations. I'll also give you some more information about the wider Royal Air Force and also about the Red Arrows. And I'll also put your eyes into the correct piece of sky so that you do not miss a single second of the action. Very busy season for us this year. We've had displays, over 60 displays this year and over 15 official fly paths. We now come the, to the end of our UK display season. We have today's display. Then we've got a few more over the weekend at Duxford, which finishes off our UK season. And then next week, we depart on a small little European tour uh, displaying in Malta, Menorca, Gibraltar, before finishing off our 2023 season at Avord Air Show in France. Of course, one of the key roles of the Red Arrows is to represent the Royal Air Force, which as a service is operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And we're committed to protecting the safety and the integrity of the United Kingdom airspace, working alongside our allies and partners against any threats overseas to keep the people of the United Kingdom safe at home. We do this through our quick reaction alert Typhoon aircraft who are on duty 24-7, 365 either based at Royal Air Force Coningsby in Lincolnshire or Royal Air Force Lossiemouth in Morrisshire, North Scotland. They're also on duty overseas in places like Estonia, working alongside our allied partners and NATO allies, protecting the safe skies of our pa partner nations. And we protect and defend the UK and allied interests in the new domains of space and cyber, while also using space and cyber expertise to enable military activity around the world through our leadership of UK Space Command and participation in the National Cyber Force. In addition to the fast jet performance of the Royal Air Force, obviously we have humanitarian aid, and we do that through our transport aircraft, such as C-17 and the Heavy Leaf Helicopter, the Chinook. And you've seen on the news in a number of years, those aircraft participating in all humanitarian aid, whether that be in the UK or overseas, helping and making sure those less fortunate than us get the necessary aid that we get. Can provide and our strongest asset is actually our personnel our whole force whether that be the regular RAF the reservists the civil servants or the civilian contractors we all work together as one whole force to ensure that the cogs of the Red Arrows are the Royal Air Force machine uh, continues to operate because after all the RAF is a force for good securing the air and space domains to maintain peace delivering humanitarian aid and support where it's needed and most and uh, needed most and employing lethal force when the circumstances demand it. And the RAF, of course, has a proud history of serving the nation. The inspirational spirit of our aviators is strong today as it was over a century ago and reflected in their character, bravery and dedication of all the personnel associated with the Royal Air Force. In addition to that, the Red Arrows also represent global Britain and we represent the red, white and blue of the Union flag. And it's often we go across the seas all throughout the UK, working overseas on overseas tours. Last year, we took in a five-week tour of the Middle East in uh, seven countries where we represent the Global Britain brand, literally flying the red, white, and blue of the Union flag, not only on our chest and on our tails, but with the colour of the smoke that we come out, representing Global Britain and promoting trade and industry all across the globe. 
Another role Red Arrows does is our ambassadors of STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, maths. And whether that be at the UK or overseas, we often pay visits to colleges, schools, universities, and institutions where our aviators, both our engineers and our pilots, promote STEM and promote young generation to take up an interest in those subjects to address the world shortage. Because after all, the Red Arrows are proud to take the red, white and blue across both the UK and the world, showcasing the excellence of the RF and representing the UK at home and overseas. And hopefully today we will put on that world leading display and demonstrate the best of global Britain. One of the questions I get asked often is when you leave the Red Arrows, will you rejoin the Royal Air Force? But of course, the Red Arrows are a military unit like any other squadron in the Royal Air Force. And as such, we are commanded by Wing Commander Adam Collins. He was my predecessor as Red 10, and he is with me today at Datum on the display. He's a former Tornado GR4 pilot, and he also flew the F-111 while on exchange with the Royal Australian Air Force. And he also flew the Hawk T Mark 1, the same aircraft as the Red Arrows, in the aggressor role with 100 Squadron when it was in existence at RAF Leeming. There are three types of display that the Red Arrows can perform. It's either a full show, a rolling show, or a flat show. But that is all dependent on... Please put your hands together for the 2023 Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows! team arrive in wall formation that's approximately two to three hundred feet from left wing tip to right wing tip they arrive at over 400 miles per hour and pulling up at four to five g as they collapse into eight arrow reaching heights of over five and a half to six thousand feet in the eight arrow position and red one brings them back down to their display minute and twists them around to the left. Bringing the team round to the left this year and for his third and final year as the team leader red one is squad leader Tom Bold. Tom as I said is in his final year as the team leader. He was also in the team between 2015 and 17, where he was a synchro leader in 2017. He's also flown the Typhoon on operational service and been a qualified flying instructor on the Hawk Team Mark II and Tucano, where he was the Tucano display pilot in 2010. As he continues to bring the team around to the left, the smoke will come on for the Eight Arrow present. Keep your eye on the team for a dynamic shape change. As Red 7 and 8 form a rollback and change the shape from 8 Arrow into Vixen. As Red 1 brings the team round to the right, you can see he's in Vixen formation. Of course, if we were a 9 ship, number 9 would be at the back and we've been our trademark Diamond 9. However, for this year, we have displayed only as an eight ship, and that's simply because we cannot train more than three pilots safely with the correct level of supervision uh, each year. However, next year is our own 60th anniversary, our own Diamond Jubilee. Our plan is to be back to nine, and therefore we'll back at our trademark Diamond Nine for the 2024 season. As Red One brings the team round to the right, get your cameras ready for the Vixen Roll. As the team rolled to left on the right hand side, closest to red one is red two. That's flight 10, Rich Walker. Rich is in his first year on the team, a highly experienced aviator and pilot. He has flown operations on both the Harrier and the Typhoon, as well as being a qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark II. As I said, 10 pilots in the team. You have the Reds 1 through 8 performing in front of you. Myself, Red 10, former Tornado GR4 pilot, Hawk T2 qualified flying instructor. 
I also fly the aircraft, spare aircraft in between displays as well as flying around the display with a photographer in the back. And of course, I've already mentioned Red 11, Officer Commanding Rafa, Wing Commander Adam Collins. Reds 4 and 5 now, the smoke comes on as they make their way all the way rearwards to force form the first of our space themed shapes. Red 1 continues to bring them round to the right. The smoke will come on for the Apollo loop. Once again, pulling up at over 400 miles per hour, 4 to 5G, as they reach a height of over 5.5 to 6,000 feet on the top of that loop, with the aircraft slowing to only 120 and 110 miles per hour which makes the controls of the aircraft a lot less responsive, making the pilots work even more difficult at the top of that loop. Conversely, now the aircraft has started to accelerate. They go through 200, 300, back to that 400 miles per hour, where now the controls are a lot more effective, making the pilots work even harder. As he brings it round to the left for the Apollo present. side of Red 1 is Red 3, that's Flight Lieutenant Tom Hansford. Tom is also in the first year of the team, he's a former Typhoon pilot and qualified weapons instructor, which means he would teach all weapon technical information and tactics to the entire Typhoon force. Red 2 and 3 smoke comes on the entire section, makes a way rearwards to form the second of our space theme shapes. We had Apollo from the Apollo space missions, now we've moved into Eagle for the Eagle lunar landing craft. As they continue round to the left, and you can see Reds 4 and 5 all the way back at the formation, making it even more difficult as we take our formation references from Red 1. And being that far back, it's extremely difficult for them to see Red 1 through the formation as the smoke comes on for the Eagle present. said Eagle being the second of our space theme shapes as the Royal Air Force acknowledges that space plays an important part in all future military operations and in 2021 UK Space Command was formed and in 2022 UK Space Command reached its initial operating capability. Smoke comes on once again from Reds 4 and 5 they move forwards to sit alongside Reds 2 and 3 with 7 8 in trail. And in 2023, the Royal Air Force celebrated the 80th anniversary of Op Chastise, one of the most famous missions from World War II. And that was to take out the dams in the Ruhr Valley in Germany, which of course was carried out by the world famous 617, the Dam Buster Squadron, who of course continue to fly in today's Royal Air Force. However, they now fly the fifth generation latest aircraft, the F-35. The team continue round to right. Get your cameras ready for the lightning roll. As the team rolls to the right on the far right hand side, uppermost as we look at it, is Red 4. Flight Lieutenant Ollie Sucklin. Ollie again is in his first year on the team. He former Tornado GR4 pilot and qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark II. His opposite number on the left hand side, smoking on the far outside, is Red 5. Flight Lieutenant Patrick Kershaw, known as Paddy. Second year on the team, he was Red 3 last year. He's fl flown operations on both the Tornado GR4 and the Typhoon with 11 and 12 Squadron RAF Coningsby. As I said, eight pilots on the team in the display this year. Myself, Red 10 and Red 11, and all the pilots on the Red Arrows must have over 1,500 faster hours and be assessed as above average in the air before they apply to join the team. Those applicants get whittled down to the final nine. They go through a mock interview, a formal interview, a flying test, and a peer review before those th nine pilots get whittled down to the final three, who become the new pilots for the new season. And our new pilots are in the back of the aircraft today, and they will be announced for the 2024 season very, very shortly. Red seven now off to the left, red eight off to the right, with all the odd numbers on the left, all the even numbers on the right, as they reverse to the left for the first big wing shape, this is Signet.
You hear that radio transmission, that's Red One giving the commands to the rest of the team. And you can almost be forgiven for almost the robotic and monotone delivery. And that's because we fly our formation by ear as well as by eye. And the guys on the outside of the team, they are having to put their input in just a little bit earlier than those on the inside. And that enables the whole formation to move as one rather than a ripple effect down the wing. You now can see Red 7 and 8 in trail on the rest of the formation as Red 1 continues to bring them around to the right. For one of the most popular, if not the most popular manoeuvre we fly in the 2023 display, Jersey, get your cameras ready as the Red Arrows ride the storm in. Tornado! Red 7 and 8 roll go, the board call is made by Red 8 as Red 7 and 8 roll around the rest of the formation at the start of the tornado. But of course Red 1 doesn't want to make it too easy for the rest of the team so watch for the colour change. As the red and the blue come on, Red 1 bends the formation around to the right, making it even more difficult for Red 7 and 8 to keep that roll rate and rhythm going around the tornado. On the front section of aircraft, you may be able to see they were flying with their air brakes out. It's a small door at the bottom of the aircraft towards the rear. This means those pilots are flying with a higher throttle set and it makes the smoke burn a lot more brightly. It also disturbs the airflow out the back of the aircraft and makes the smoke billow a lot more full. And we use that in certain parts of the display to enhance those manoeuvres. The team now in dagger as we come to the end of the first half. In the second half, you'll see the more high paced dynamic, heart-pumping, jaw-dropping manoeuvres, but it involves two distinct sections. We now have Reds 1 through 5, now, now known as Enid, named after Enid Blyton's famous five from the children's series books, and Reds 6, 7 and 8, now known as Hannah, named after squad leader Ray Hannah, one of the first members of the Red Arrows, who was attributed of taking the team from a 7 to a 9, and also attributed of forming our trademark Diamond 9 shape. However, Jersey, look directly to your front. Get yourselves ready for the start of the second half. This is Detonator. <laughs> Enid breaking first, followed by Hannah. And you'll have heard a radio tone in that radio transmission. That's actually Red 6 giving the command to 7 and 8 to break. And that allows him to talk to Hannah Formation without stepping on top of the voice commands of Red 1. We now have Red 6 off to the left, Red 7 off to the right. This is the synchro pair and they are led by Red 6 off to the left. The synchro leader, squad leader James Turner known as JT. JT is in his fourth and final year on the team. He's a former Typhoon pilot and instructor on the Typhoon, as well as a qualified flying instructor on the Hawk T Mark 1. The synchro pair now down at only 100 feet, a closing speed of over 800 miles per hour, looking to pass each other within only 100 feet from wingtip to wingtip. Each aircraft performs a four point hesitation roll. Turn is the call from Red 6 as they now turn away, pulling up to 6G as they turn hard back towards the centre of the display line to complete the manoeuvre called Cyclone. As they lead to the front, coming in from the right hand side is Red 8. Down at 100 feet, over 450 miles per hour with the blue smoke in trail. Look to your left over the far side, over the castle as Red 8 lines himself up with the inverted V of Enid to perform the goose.
Red One gathers Enid and brings them around to left. And as they turn, you may be able to see a small pod underneath the aeroplane. Quite hard to see. However, that is actually the smoke pod. That smoke pod is capable of producing five minutes of white smoke, one minute of blue smoke, and one minute of red smoke. And each of those colours is selectable by its own individual button on the pilot's control column. And during winter training, the smoke plan is carefully constructed between red one and red six to ensure that we have the right colour smoke at the right time in the display and that we simply don't run out. Look directly to your front now. You've got the Synchro Prayer running back in, led by Red 6 with Red 7 in tra trail as they pull up. Once again, Jersey, get your cameras ready. The Synchro pit Prayer splits. The smoke comes on for the world-famous Synchro Heart. And coming in from the high left-hand side is Red 8 as he spears that heart. And of course, Red Owls would like to dedicate today's heart to all our wise partners, girlfriends and family who support us in everything that we do and some of them who are here today with us in Jersey. Keep your eye on the synchro pair. Once again, Red 7 off to the right, Red 6 off to the left. They'll dive down to 100 feet. They'll perform a series of opposition barrel rolls in a manoeuvre called the Double Roll. distance slightly right of the center and he needed running back in once again with the white smoke in trail and this time red eight has joined them as he sits in trail on red one the red and the blue come on as the enid and red eight perform a series of barrels through the sky leaving a snake like smoke trail in the sky this is python I mentioned earlier that the Red Arrows, there are 10 pilots on the team. However, the Red Arrows is not just about the pilots. We have a squadron of over 130 personnel and 120 of them are support personnel. That's the engineers, the administrators, the die team, the public relations, and all those support personnel who keep the Red Arrows machine going. And they are known as the blues due to the color of their flying display coveralls. Inside those blues, there are 10 individuals who get to fly in the back of our aircraft in between displays when we cannot take the full engineering complement. They are known as Circus. One individual with me at every display is Circus 10. This year, that is Corporal Phil Dye, and he is on the beach filming the display for safety and debriefing purposes. He's also responsible for many of the images and videos you see across social media filmed from the back of my aircraft. However, this time, look to your right, look to your left. You've got red six coming in from the right, red seven coming in from the left. Once again, down at only 100 feet, a closing speed of over 800 to 850 miles per hour. I know I'm looking to pass each other within only 100 feet. Each aircraft performs a 360 degree aileron roll. Pull, go is the call from Red 6. Both aircraft now pull up 5 to 6G, trying to mirror each other. 5 to 6G means everything about them is now weighing 5 to 6 times heavier than what you and I are as we stand on the seashore. They reach a height of over 2,500 feet. They're now inverted 60 degrees, nose down, 
trying to capture that 100 feet as they complete the manoeuvre called Boomerang. Coming in from your left hand side over the harbour, you can see Enid running in once again with the white smoke in trail. Red one once again pulls him up over 400 miles per hour. He will twist to the right and in honour of His Majesty King Charles III coronation this year, once again, Jersey, get your cameras ready for the Enid coronation vertical break. Look to your right hand side and you have Hannah running back in. That's red six, seven and eight. Six rolls inverted. And he calls for seven, eight to roll as red seven, eight roll around the smoke of six in corkscrew. Smoking blue is red seven, flight lieutenant Stu Roberts. Stu is in his second year on the team. He was red two last year. And he has flown the Typhoon on operations with 11 and 12 squadron RAF Coventry. Smoking red is red eight, flight lieutenant David Simmons, known as Simo. He's in his fifth and final year on the team. He is former Tornado GR4 pilot. He flew the Tornado roll demo in 2010. He's also flown the Harrier and the F5 while on exchange with the United States Marine Corps. As Hannah Lee to your left hand side, look to your right and you can see Enid coming back in once again with the white smoke in trail. Two and three, roll goes. Reds two and three, roll around the outside. Clear, go. Clear, go is the call as Reds four and five, roll around the outside. And one of the hardest manoeuvres for our new pilots each year to master. This is rollbacks. motto of the Red Arrows is a clat, which means excellence, and that means every single member of the team, from the very bottom all the way to the top, are striving for excellence in everything that we do. However, we're also aware that we are guardians of that motto for only three to five years, and as such, we try to leave the squadron in a better place than where we found it. Look directly to your front now, and you can see Hannah running back in from the front. That's red six, seven, and eight. 7-8, roll go as red 7-8, blue smoke comes on, rolls around red 6 for the final break of the show. Get your cameras ready for the HANA Vortex break. Once again, red 6 off to the left, red 7 off to the right, red 8 up over the top. Synchro pair once again will pull up 30 degrees, nose up, reaching a height of about a thousand feet before turning hard back towards the display line for their final maneuver of the show. Once again, 100 feet, a closing speed of over 800 miles per hour. They'll perform a series of opposition bar rolls, followed by inverted flight to leave the display in the crossbow. Prepare 
Steve Tuaria look directly to your front. He needs running back in. The white smoke is in trail. The red smoke comes on from red one. He rolls around the formation, leaving the infinity symbol in the sky for the infinity break. However, Jersey, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. Please put your hands together for the 2023 Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team. It's the Red Arrow! one puts his smoke on he'll gather the rest of the formation take them back to jersey airport and where we're operating from today if you'd like any more information about the red arrows of course we are on the internet refmd.uk forward slash red arrows we are on x the old twitter and insta ref red arrows Uh, all the pilots have their own account on Instagram. I am RAF Red 10. Find me, you'll find the rest of the team. Of course, we have our public relations tent just a bit further down from where I'm speaking. Uh, have a pop along, speak to some of our blues, get some of the merchandise. On behalf of the Royal Air Force and the Red Arrows, once again, thanks for coming out and joining to watch our display. Hope you had a really good time. Please take care of yourself on your journey home. Thanks very much. Goodbye. And our thanks very much indeed to Red 10 squadron leader, Graham Muscat. Thank you, Graham. Excellent commentary. As always, fantastic show. Give our best to the entire team of the Red Arrows. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, this is Liberation Radio. We hope you've enjoyed what has been an absolutely fantastic display in gorgeous weather. Please, 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 if you can, donate for future uh, air displays. There are QR codes around that you can do so. And we'll come back with Ben with his final thoughts in just a moment. Uh, looking forward to you joining me tomorrow morning from 6 till 10 on The Breakfast Show on Liberation Radio. If you want to find us, uh, just download the app. It's easiest. Liberation Radio, the app. Download that to your phone. You can play that in your car. You can play that at home. You can have it on your computer. Whatever you want to do, listen to Liberation Radio. And then you've got uh, three channels to choose from. So you can have hits, classics and gold. Whichever music you like, you'll get that at breakfast. Unfortunately, you still get me. That's the clever technology of it. In the meantime, uh, Ben Dunnell alongside here. Ben, we've had... Uh, a smaller display than normal, I think it's fair to say. However, we've had incredible quality. We really have, haven't we? And incredible weather to watch it in. And I think as we come towards the end of our day here today, it's worth just saying thank you to everyone involved in putting this display on. It's a huge team of volunteers that does so, some of whom up at the Air Display HQ at the uh, Air Training Corps uh, HQ near the airport don't even get to see the air show. They are working there all day to make sure that everything logistically runs smoothly. And, of course, they like all of us here would very very much like to see this event come back once again next year with an even bigger and brighter lineup so please do take that opportunity if you're able to donate to help secure the future of the Jersey International Air Display either by going to ports.je slash pay online or scan the QR codes that you can find around the site here you need to input JIAD into each of the three fields the customer name the account code and the invoice number and then click on pay and you'll be doing your bit to make sure that this brilliant event comes back for many seasons to come thank you very much just a reminder about rubbish please do not do not do not wherever you are 
uh, wherever you've been watching this from, do not leave any rubbish anywhere. Take it with you. Pick it up, take it with you. If you've been picnicking, if you've been having a snack, if you've had a few bottles of uh, lemonade, then please, please do take them all with you. Don't leave any rubbish behind. It, uh, it just means that someone else has got to clean it up. It just means it's more expensive. It just means it's an inconvenience. And it's just not a great look in the environment that we live in. So please do take your rubbish home with you wherever you're going. Uh, hello's, it's, hello, says Fraz. It's my wife, Fiona Gilroy's birthday today. She's 41, but don't tell the whole arena. All right, then. Uh, give her a shout-out on air. Uh, also, Joe McDougall said, any chance of a shout-out to Lee Crow? Enjoys watching the show every year. Uh, whose granddad flew the Lancaster, and watching it makes him very proud. Lee's a real stand-up guy. I'm very proud to have served himself. Thank you, Joe, for that. Uh, I know you're busy. It mean a lot to Lee to have a shout-out. He's unaware, but he's listening. Lee, we know. Lee Crow, thank you very much, and you're a stand-up guy. Emma Williamson, I lost ten, a £10 note going to put it into the charity bucket for next year's show. Um, well, there you go. It's going to a good place. If anyone finds it, please put it in the charity bucket. I don't mind which charity. Uh, hello to John, my wonderful partner, who's helping me settle into my new job here in Jersey. We moved it. Well, we've all had a great day, haven't we? You in your armchairs with your beers and your pims, and as... Uh, on the seafront at Jersey, baking and sweating in the sunshine. Uh, yes, it's been a great day. Uh, I do like my analogies, don't I? So uh, thank you for coming into our restaurant today and eating all our free food. Um, but we have to make a living, and we make our living by uh, attracting subscribers to our uh, Watch.PlanesTV channel. Uh, for example, this weekend we are broadcasting on the subscription channel at the big show at Duxford. Where how many Spitfires are they getting in the air at the moment? It, it, anyway, it's a big show. It's their big show of the year. And, and for example, our, our deal at Duxford is that we do all their flying days for free on YouTube, and they let us do the two big air shows on our channel, which is a subscription channel. So um, please join us. Uh, join our channel. Uh, try it for, say, the run-up to Christmas. It'll cost you £30, £10 a month. And uh, give us a try. I mean, £30 is the price of a, what, a, what used to be a DVD or a Blu-ray. But on the channel, there are 200 or so programmes that we've made in the past, plus the various live broadcasts. There's a heck of a lot to see on our channel. If you watched earlier in the stream, there were a few uh, clips from earlier programmes, Farnborough, Riyadh, La Fertale, what else? Oh yes, of course, NATO Days. Um, and we are at NATO Days this weekend broadcasting for free. So there's your choice, NATO Days for free, Duxford uh, on our channel. But uh, it, it is a plea, it's almost a begging plea. But if you've enjoyed it, do please join our channel for a period, give us a try, say from now until beyond Christmas. There's a lot we've got to put on there. Um, and tell us what you'd like to see if you know we've made the program in the past and it's not there yet well ask us but anyway it's been great to have you all today super to see lots of chat shame we haven't got a fourth person here who could have monitored the chat and uh, no. uh, and come back but um, no. I know the organizers here Mike Higgins he's ever so chuffed to see people from oh, South Africa Canada USA I think there was a Brazil wasn't there um, oh, he's, he's dead chef, Sweden, yeah, we, um, it, it's, it's been super to see. And that, of course, is, is, is the beauty of the internet. We reach the world uh, and can show the world the sorts of air shows we have in the UK. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I think we're going to sign, we're going to sign off. And, uh, of course, Liberation Radio has been uh, taking this all day, thanks to them. Uh, thanks to Jersey for having us, of course. Um, it is a big effort getting on the ferry, getting everything packed. The paperwork, you wouldn't believe now we're not in the EU, but we won't go down that road, will we? Uh, it has been a great day. Thank you for joining us. Come and join us on our subscription channel for Duxford this weekend um, and dip into the Ostrava, uh, the free stream on YouTube as well, NATO Days Ostrava. Thanks again, and we'll sign off now. <laughs>